All right. Hi, guys. How are you? How's everybody doing? I hope you can hear me. Let me know if the volume is okay and if I sound okay. Um, where is everybody tuning in from today? It's really cool knowing that I've got people from all around the world. Yeah, it's kind of surreal, bro. <laughs> We've got people from all across the US. We've got Oregon, Oregon. Why does that feel fake? Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. Oh my gosh. Montana, Illinois, Georgia, Texas, Redmond, Washington. Oh, hey. Hey, Marty. Um, then we've got all the way further afield. We have Nigeria, Zambia. Oh my gosh. We've got France, UK. Dallas, Texas, Canada. This is so cool. This is very, very cool. Also, yeah, Star Wars painting. I know nothing about Star Wars, but this is up here. Um, I like how you've got A113 as your uh, username, Snoozy, seeing as that's like an old classroom of the character animators. I'm assuming you know exactly what I'm talking about. Except, you know, fun fact, a113 at CalArts no longer belongs to the character animators. It hasn't done for a while. It's actually the first year graphic design room. So the graphic designers have stolen it from us. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I like our new rooms. Anyway, wow, we've got some Germany. We've got some Brazil, Colombia, Minnesota. This is, I don't know, this is really cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna dive in pretty speedily, methinks, today. Just because I feel like I end up talking for a really long time every other time but I'm sure I'll be talking plenty in between you know whilst I'm drawing tea break um, yeah okay so today is I, I'm assuming part one of pose sheet day so what is a pose sheet I mean, it sounds pretty obvious, right? It's just like a bunch of different poses that your characters can be in. But there's a couple different reasons you may have pose sheets, and it depends on what type of production you're working on. So in my case specifically, I'm most likely going to be the only person animating on my film. And so it's just like a point of reference for me, um, you know, to make sure that my proportions are in check. And so, um, so that I don't feel lost when I'm drawing completely new poses when I get into storyboarding, the animatic, or even in animation. But it also is good to be really specific. So I'm not just drawing any old poses today, I am drawing key poses, or at the very least exploring the types of key poses that I have in my film. Um, you know, like, for example, I could have a character just standing and waving, but I don't have that happening anywhere in my film, so it's a little bit redundant. Um, yeah. Another reason that poses can be incredibly useful, by the way, this is not scripted, so I'm sorry if this is like super terribly organized, but yes. Um, another reason that can be really useful is on like TV productions. Most primetime TV, so think like Rick and Morty, Family Guy, but even, um, what is it, even like, Hilda. All these shows are rigged animation, which is essentially a bunch of 2D assets, like you'll have a forearm and top half of your arm, torso, neck, head, and then they're treated like a puppet, so you have like pegs, and so you move all the parts around, blah blah blah. Um, that is a very efficient style of animation, but even with those types of animation, you're going to have some really like elaborate poses from time to time, also known as special poses. So sometimes pose sheets are for those special poses that then get sent overseas so that they can get those really particular poses right. Oh my gosh, take a shot every time I say pose today. Uh, Diozazine, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, says, please show the image behind you. Okay, uh, wait, hang on. Ugh, there you go. Um, again, I know nothing about Star Wars. This is not mine, so enjoy. I was thinking of taking it down, but I kind of don't want to mess around with anything on the walls. But you have it now in the background in case you get bored of my face. Luckily, we will move away from my face soon. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, why else are pose sheets useful? Hmm. I'm trying to think. What have I said already? So another thing is it's good for testing limits. Like, uh, you know, how, how, I'm going to tilt this down. How flexible is someone, right? Like I can touch, uh, I can touch my hand at the back, right? Like this, but maybe some characters, they just cannot, like the arms are too short or something. And so you need to test how far can they go in various poses, whatever, before their anatomy breaks. And you want to test that because then it's going to either limit the action you can do animation wise. It's going to make you have to find a way to break, break them convincingly if you need those types of poses, or it's going to have you redesign the character entirely. Um, I'm not concerned about that with my film today because my characters don't move very much. Like they walk around, they talk and have gentle like shoulder shrugs and stuff, but there's no high action, crazy intense moments where, you know, the, where their poses would be super duper pushed. Yeah, so that's really useful. Another thing is a very broad and general one with pose sheets, and that is just getting used to drawing your characters. When you have a turnaround, which let me, let me switch to uh, art mode. I've labeled this. Boop. Okay. So we have here turnarounds of the characters I'm drawing today. We have Maya and Eddie, and I'm going to be drawing them mostly together, methinks. That's what my patrons have voted on, after all. So if you want to be involved in all the polls I do uh, to you know vote on the content I do next, Patreon is where it's at. You can do that from $1 a month. Anyway. Um, they're just standing very plainly. I'm, I added, you know, a, a basic smile on Eddie and a basic kind of slightly concerned face on Maya. But beyond that, there's not very much personality happening here. Last week we worked on facial expressions, which is, that's a great start, you know, like the face tells a lot, but our bodies do just as much work as the face to tell other humans what we're thinking and it just kind of adds a little bit of general character so it doesn't quite come through necessarily in a pose because it's a still image but like the way a character walks or the how expressive they are with their hands or like if they're sitting in a chair how would they sit in a chair kind of thing like those key ideas can say a lot about a character without you actually having to do too much like they don't have to say anything and you already have a better understanding of them. So that's also a good reason to have post sheets. I have been neglecting the chat. Let's see, is this, is anyone, is anyone hanging out? Um, is this for your class? Kind of. So for those who don't know, and sorry if I'm repeating myself with some of you guys, at CalArts you make a film every single year and technically you're supposed to anyways, but my film, I've decided to take two years to make it. So I started this back in January, like December, January. Um, but yeah, I am making it for school. You need it to graduate, but it's my story, my style. Everything is me. You know, my school isn't like involved in, in like the story or the designs or anything. Uh, it's just, they're the ones keeping an eye on making sure I get it done basically. <laughs> so yeah, I like post sheets for personality things as well. Yeah, it, personality is just so important to inject into your characters. Otherwise, what are you attached to? The other thing with post sheets is you can have individual characters, which I'll have some of maybe today, but beyond that, when you have two characters together, AKA a character interaction or a character relationship, that is the most interesting thing. So fun fact, when you are like pitching a project or trying to tell a story, think about like any cartoon, any show that, or film that you truly, truly enjoy. Why are you so attached to it? Usually it's not the world building. It's not the plot. It's not individual characters. It's the dynamic between characters and how, like how they interact with each other. That being said, 
I'm a huge fan of really good world building, huge fan of really interesting plot, but those two would be made entirely redundant if the characters interacting with each other are a bore or just generally unpleasant to see. So let me show you, this is not a pose sheet, but I did work on this a while back when I was exploring the design of the old couple that are in this film. This film, by the way, it's titled Fireworks, as is in the title of the stream. If you want to see more behind the scenes content, I have some on my website and I have more and we'll keep adding a bunch of stuff to my Patreon. So if you're interested in checking out my Patreon, actually all of my links they are down in the description, including my Discord server, by the way, if you guys want to join, if you haven't already, that's, I'm trying to like revive that place a little bit. Um, it seems to be doing well. Anyway, so this was an exploration of the basic designs of my old couple. They were mostly there, but there were just like little tweaks here and there. But I figured, you know what, why not have some fun and draw them interacting together? Like, you can see just from the facial expressions, the way that they're standing next to each other and everything, what their dynamic is. I mean, if anyone in the chat wants to take a stab at what you think this relationship is like, you're welcome to do so before I, before I say anything. Um, but yeah, so this is a little looser than what we're doing today. As in, this is the finished product. My finished product will be a little tighter, but I think we're only gonna be getting some sketches done today because I have a job. Um, I got, not hired, I got booked. I got booked of like an hour ago or two hours ago. So uh, that was not planned, but I am gonna be working today, tomorrow, and then maybe I'll be streaming again on the weekend to finish this off and then maybe getting back into storyboarding if you're interested. We shall see. Um, whilst I think about this, this is so random, but if my dad is in the chat again, message me and say hi. <laughs> um, turns out that my papa has a habit of watching my streams for a little while now, which is really sweet. So if any of you tuned in, last week and saw Papa Mepti say hi to him again so <laughs> if he's here if he's here he might be busy today who knows but uh yeah so that's the old couple Lost Frog says I'm sure their relationship is very sweet and they've been married for a long time yeah yeah I mean I don't know about married I, I have, that's not a decision I've made I'm, but either way they're together and um you know the the old lady is very like patient and happy and just absolutely head over heels in love with her her old man and he very much loves her but he's a little less um affectionate you know he he kind of is a bit more staunch and stoic but he still deeply loves her and she's very proud of him and he is a little more reserved but also just as proud of her and very grateful to have her around although he doesn't say it out loud so much yeah Papti. Yeah, I think some, I don't, it must have been you, Arcade Floor, the other day who suggested Papti. I think that's a really funny one. You can call him Papti for sure. I'll consult with my father to see if he approves. <laughs> then again, throughout my whole life, I've called him all kinds of silly names, so I'm sure he'll be able to handle Papti. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the rest of what we're doing today. So, Maya and Eddie, these guys, again, sorry if I'm repeating myself from the other days, they are a young couple. I'm, I'm thinking like 20, 21, so like my age. And uh, they are very cute. They like, they love each other very much. Uh, you know, the whole young love thing, but there's like an awkward blockade in the way where Maya has had a fight with her mother and her mother is like far away so the interactions with the mother are on the phone and um, that kind of happens before the film starts and now Maya is trying to resolve things and is trying to call her mum but her mother is not picking up and so her whole existence has been completely preoccupied with desperately wanting her mother to pick up and so everything else in the world has kind of disappeared for her and Eddie is, you know, really concerned for her, a little frustrated, doesn't quite know what what to do about that. Wait, what? I'm sorry, this is so random, but 
suddenly my camera is in 3-4 ratio, like my face cam. But has it been like this this whole time? I haven't changed any settings for my stream from like Saturday, whenever I last streamed. So I don't know why it's doing that, but now these black bars on the side are really annoying me. Well, I guess there's nothing interesting either side of me, but... Man, I'm getting distracted today. Liza, you are not late, don't you worry. Anytime you want to drop in, you are all good. Today we are going to do poses, and seeing as I haven't started, I don't think you're late. I'm just giving everyone the rundown of what's happening. So I have a bunch of poses listed. I went through my script and my thumbnails to see what kind of key poses I have. And so I wrote them down. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I like started up this document beforehand just, just to, you know, speed things up a little. Oh, whoops, hang on. Okay, so let's get rid of this. I get very distracted and I get very bored and so I sketch when I shouldn't. Um, you know what? This face isn't so bad. It looks kind of realistic. Not too bad for like 3 a.m. Anya doodles. <laughs> anyway, we don't need that right now. Wait, where did it go? The heck? I thought I cut and paste it. Cut and paste. Hide. I'm gonna rename it doodle time. Fun fact, when I was like 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, I had an account on the coding website Scratch, if you guys are familiar. And dude, Scratch had changed my life, <laughs> honestly, because um, without it, I wouldn't have discovered Gravity Falls when I did. And Gravity Falls was the reason that I was like, hey, I want to make cartoons, I want to go to cow arts. So thank you, Scratch. Anyway, my username on there is doodlegirl41. I think it's like doodle-girl41. So if you want to find my stuff, you're more than welcome to. Mm -mm. Hi Artyom, welcome back. It's nice to see all these familiar faces. Milendop asks, what is my canvas size? You know, I should probably start putting that in the description because I get asked that every single time I stream, but no worries. So it is 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels. So that is standard 16 by 9 ratio, the usual that you get for film and TV these days. It's just, I think, uh, one and a half, is it one, one and a half times bigger than the standard HD, which is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. The reason I go bigger is because I'm including lots of drawings on this canvas, and so I want there to be some scope of making it bigger. Sydney asks, why did you decide to change Maya's clothes from red to blue? If you were referring to the thumbnail, <laughs> I changed the colors of the characters literally just because I want it to be on brand with my thumbnails. You know, I'm very like yellowy, orangey reds, especially yellow. So yeah, the thumbnail for today is just me coloring that to match. But um, in terms of the story, my film, my film is split into three parts, kind of. I guess and there's three stories happening within and each story is represented by a different color. When I was doing the expression sheets last week, the that character, the father, he's part of the yellow story. The old couple that I showed are part of the green story and Maya and Eddie are the blue story. So yeah, uh, an FAQ would probably be a good idea to have. That's a very, very good point. Actually, you know what? Yeah. People do have that on their streams. I'll set that up for next time. Very smart. Can you tell that I'm still very new to this? Whoops. Okay, so anyway, we have our Maya poses, our Eddie poses, and our Maya and Eddie together poses. Um, I don't have a plan for today. I don't know what I'm gonna start with. I might just doodle a bunch and not even do any of these specific poses just to get a little more comfortable, um, but Yes, these are the poses that I hope to eventually get to, and something I have picked up is when I am making a film, when you're doing storyboards, like if you think of some of your favorite films, there's ones which have a really great story, right? But then there's ones which have just like iconic, super cinematic layouts, 
like the composition of an image you could you know screenshot it print it big frame it and put it up on a wall beautiful you don't need any of the rest of the film just looks great in its own way and i want to make sure that as many shots in my film as possible feel that way they're not necessarily going to be as cinematic as like say every single stanley kubrick shot or something but i do want them to feel very comfortable and considered and a lot of that is going to be tweaking really minor things to do with each pose so not only am I going to be trying to figure out what pose best suits the personality of the characters, but also what pose best suits the framing that it's going to be kept within. Because a lot of these poses are going to be full body, but the actual film is going to have them cropped off, maybe like shoulder up or something. Yeah, sounds like every second of Arcane. Exactly, like if I have the time and the resources to make every single frame a painting kind of deal, which that's a YouTuber's name. Um, if I have a chance to do that, then I'm gonna do that. Cause yeah, anyway. Hi, it's the first time I get to see you live, finally. Yay, you're a big inspo to me, so I watch this very closely while working on my characters too. Oh, thank you so much, Anal. Amal, sorry. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, whether it be live, whether it be listening later on. Hang on. Sippy, sippy. Oh, my tea's getting cold already. This is showing how slow I am. We're like almost half an hour in and I have not started as usual. Anyway, um, what am I doing? Okay, so I have one big thing that I want to do before I get into any proper sketches, and that is hiding the checklist and then gonna get, gonna hide, no, not these guys, we're gonna hide the small ref. So I'm gonna trace my own characters. Eddie, I'm gonna turn his visibility down, and we're gonna start with, actually, no, let's start with Maya. Maya's easier, I think. I don't know, is she? We'll figure it out. So I've made these layers called Maya shapes and Eddy shapes. Don't know why I named them that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna switch it up to be a multiply layer, just, I like working in multiply. I like this red color. This default palette I have here, whoops, is my OC Nikos, but the red of his coat is just very fun to draw in. So that's what I, I like to work in. Gonna get my inking brush, but I'm gonna turn it down. Someone did ask what brushes I use. Ink bleed, that's it. That's basically it. Um, I have some other textural stuff here and there, but it always varies. It depends on piece to piece, but in general, both for sketching and for line art, it is ink bleed, which is a default Procreate brush, so yeah. Okay, so what am I doing here? Actually, no, I'm gonna turn the opacity down even more. I want to do a basic breakdown of like her skull, general eye level, what's happening underneath her clothes, as in where will her joints are, and that way he we can um, we can like use that as a looser reference for making sure proportions are okay. Can you please say hi to my son? His name is Terry Kang. He loves your channel. Hi Terry, thank you so much for enjoying my channel, and I hope you're doing very well. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, if anyone else wants shout outs, <laughs> go for it. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna start with the front one. These can be really loose and rough. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, let's see. My characters have kind of wonky head shapes. They're not very round per se. So you know how people like to do the sphere and then they add like a chin and stuff. I don't think a sphere would work for her because her head is almost rectangular. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's her head. I assume somewhere around where her mouth currently is is where her neck joins. So it's gonna be there. Where are her shoulders? Also, Jasinki ink or Gesinki. Jasinki, Gesinki is a fun brush too. I used to use that one quite a lot. Um, so she's got puffy sleeves, right? And very thin wrists. And so here I'm gonna have to do a little bit of figuring out where her like her joints are so i'm um, gonna go with maybe like here and here just a general tip i'm gonna stand up sorry if this chair squeaks oh we're all good okay hang on i need to be able to see myself uh i tend to draw arms that are really long almost ape-like 
And it's funny because in anime, I think it's kind of the opposite, and I always get really uncomfortable by the weirdly short arms anime characters have. Like, I don't get it. But regular human proportions, your elbow tends to be in it like the smallest part of your waist. That's typically where it's level with. And then, maybe you can see me, let's see. And then your hands are kind of midway across your thigh. So, yeah, elbow at the smallest part of your waist, hands midway down the thigh. And I'm generally trying to keep that in mind. It's not completely accurate. As you can see, Maya's hands almost reach her knees, which almost all my characters do. I just love big, long, expressive limbs, so long as they don't get too confusing. But um, yeah, that's a little factoid for you. And I'm keeping that in mind and where I want to place her elbow. So right now, the thinnest part of her waist is pretty high up. She's got a very short torso and very long, um, what's it called? Very short torso, very long like hip leg area. So I'm just gonna work with it being a little, a little wonky, you know? It's, she's a cartoon, you know? She doesn't have to be real human proportions. Uh, hey Anya, long time no see, always blown away by your designs, love the shape language and your color palette is always in point. Thank you so much Alex, it's really nice to see that you're tuning in, I hope you're doing well. Uh, if you don't know, Alex was one of the people I collaborated with on Ethan Becker's um, story time project from a couple months back, so that was really fun, yeah, yeah, awesome, thank you again for tuning in. Question, cartoons are cartoons, I can mess with proportions. Yeah, of course you can mess with proportions. You can mess with them however you want, so long as they are still functional in some way. But, you know, you create your own physics. And so it can be as broken as you want, as long as it's believable. Can you make it feel like it moves in a way that makes sense? That's what you want to do. Okay, so I am guessing that the elbow goes somewhere around here. Actually, you know what? No, it's not. It's not going to go there. It's going to go in more. Somewhere around there. Boop. Again, this is very loose, so don't worry about it being perfectly placed. This is just so that when I am sketching again, it's, it's easier to follow how big something should be, how long something should be, and so forth. Now, Maya has these very sloped shoulders, as do the majority of my characters, which is going to make it a little difficult if they, like, shrug, you know, if they have that level of expressiveness, but it's fine, it's fine, we can make this work. Someone said I love the house head and upside down pentagon, that's so funny, she does have a bit of a house shaped head. Hey puppy! Dogs strolling past, making some noise. Just reminding us that he's here, that he exists. Okay, something like that. The other side. I mean, technically I don't really need to draw the other hand because it's all the same, but eh, whatever. And then the thumb is joining. The thumb joins at the palm, like on the side, the other four fingers, or in her case, three, because all my characters have four fingers. The other three are at the top of the palm. So, let's see. Um, as we pointed out earlier, her torso is very short and very high up, so I'm just going to have have it kind of placed in here, something like that. Oh, that's not centered. Boop. And then her hips are going to be a little longer. They're going to be almost the same size as the torso. And that will bring her knees here and her joining up like that. Again, I want this to be super simplified so I just don't get tangled up later down the line with my sketches. Um, I don't need to do all the angles, I just want to do a couple. Her ankles are like somewhere in here, her feet end here, but her shoes are really chunky so they stick out more. Okay, that is, that is somewhere along the lines of done. We'll reveal how that looks on its own in a moment, but... Yeah. Uh, I wasn't in the storyboard live stream, but what are your tips to make a good storyboard? Um, I will be doing another live stream for storyboarding, hopefully maybe on Sunday. But um, in the meantime, 
I think it is to, I'm gonna say two things. One, as I mentioned earlier in this stream, is if you want something to feel really visually compelling and strong and like cinematic, make sure that you can treat every single shot separately and make it like beautiful. As in, you know, if it's TV, oftentimes you have things being economical and just purely for function. And that is also fine, you know, it doesn't make your storyboards bad. But if you want beautiful storyboards, you want to really consider the composition of every single shot. And that is the whole general composition, where each character is placed, the dynamic between the characters. Another good thing to keep an eye out for with good storyboards is um, angles. So what angle are you looking at the character? What characters are looking at each other? What angle, who's taller, who's bigger, who's smaller? It's a lot about power dynamics and stuff like that. Um, so don't forget, the camera is also a character. So the lens which we, the audience, sees the story through is a character. Sometimes we are looking through the eyes of another character. Sometimes we are an objective, like a little ghost in the film. Sometimes we are like a passerby. Um, but for example, if you have, I don't know, like if you have me looking up at you, being all small and frail, it indicates that you, the, the uh, audience, is more powerful than me. If you have me like looking down on you, like all big and tall and whatever, and you're looking up, then that's shifting the power dynamic again. So yeah, there you go, those are some tips. Just randomly throwing them in there. <laughs> anyway, let's move back on to working with Maya. I, you know, I think we can just do the front and the side sketches for this. I'm not so pressed about any of the rest of it. So, God, she really does have a funny face. I, I really have enjoyed kind of ridiculous proportions lately where typically normal humans, our eyes are around halfway down our head. I mean, we have like a hairline in the way, so it doesn't quite look like that. But um, I've been really enjoying placing the eyeballs super duper high up. I just think it looks funny, but you have to make sure it looks intentional because otherwise it just looks like you don't understand proportions. Okay, so we're gonna have a basic torso, shoulder goes here, that's kind of more or less the same as where it is from the front angle, so that's good. This is gonna be here, this elbow, bringing it forward, do 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 palm in for the hand, it's quite small, then like a spade-like rest of the hand with the fingers. Again, this is super, super rough, so I'm not concerned about the proportions being perfectly matched up from, uh, what's it called? From drawing to drawing on this. It's, you know, it, it just needs to be pretty close. So Amel is asking, is this for an animation or a comic or an animation project? So this is for a short film that I'm making, I aim to be done with the short film by around April of 2023. Gosh, that sounds so far away. That's awful. <laughs> um, there's uh, some of it on my website. My website is linked in the description if you would like to check out some of the content I've done, if you want to see more of the content I've done for it and keep getting consistent updates on all of the behind the scenes. That's on my Patreon, which is also linked in the description. Um, the script is also available in, uh, on my website, it's like the very first link, so if you want to spoiler yourself, you're welcome to do so. Just don't put spoilers in the chat, please. Um, and yes, it's for my end of year short story, so I'm making this film by myself, but it is part of my school curriculum at Cow Arts. Okay, alright, let's hide this. Okay, I'm gonna just shimmy this over. Cool, so there's Maya. That's how she looks when she's super sketched up. Cool. And then we'll move on quickly to Eddie. I also just drew them in to be the correct height comparison so that I can keep that in mind too. So not only the, propor like the proportions within the characters, but the characters in relation to each other. Now, Eddie has the weirdest head shape I think of, of them all in this film. 
He's got like a hammerhead shark looking <laughs> head. But uh, I enjoy it. I think it's funny. And he's got like a crazy long neck and all of that jazz. Now he looks like he has giant shoulders, but he doesn't. He's got shoulder pads. Yes, so the girl, someone said Maya, question mark. Maya is the girl, and then this guy is Eddie. He's the guy. Um, yeah, I named her Maya because her, she is half Russian, like myself, and has a mother who is very overbearing in this film. Like that a lot of the argument stems from the mother being very possessive. And in Russian, correct me if I'm wrong, fellow Russians, the way you say mine is like maya. At the maya, and the maya, whatever. And so the mother literally named her own daughter mine, like she owns the kid. So yeah, it's it's just like a little tidbit of fun whatever it's not any major plot thing it's just just fun okay um gosh i am not i'm not in with it today i'm so tired as always i feel like i say this every stream now but doing these streams kind of wakes me up it makes me have to pay attention to what i'm doing a little more which i'm very grateful for because otherwise i'd be stuck not doing the work I should be doing and I would be lying in bed all day or procrastinating by going to the gym instead which is like you know what I can just go to the gym and work um mayor yeah I guess it's mayor if it's like um it's like the gender thing right dude I've not listened to Russian in so long but like if if it's like feminine maya right it ends with an a something like that I'll see ya uh, Tsubasa, I'm also always tired. I don't remember when the last time was that I got restful sleep, as in quite literally. It was, I think, sometime in 2017. Genuinely, so. <laughs> Yay. Um, Eddie also has a very short torso. I am trying to expand my character to a little bit, my character design horizons, where I shouldn't have every single character have long skinny limbs and a short torso because I have gotten in trouble being critical of that. So, um, you know, it's very hypocritical of me to be like, eh, you don't have very much variety in your character design shapes. And then I proceed to do exactly the same, but yeah. It's funny because in Greek we have a name like Maya or Amaya. Yeah, um, it's quite a popular name, I think, across the world in a variety of shapes and forms. Kind of like, I think in Greek you also have Helena, right? And then that evolved in Russian to be Yelena. Um, yeah, or like my name is Anya, but there's different versions of it across the world that is Anna or just Anya, but a different spelling. I don't know. I think that the, is it etymology? Is that the, is that the term? The terminology? Just like the evolution of language and names and words is so fascinating to me. Yeah, I don't think I'm interested enough in it to like fully study it, you know, make a career out of it, but it's definitely something I would want to take a course in at some point, or just generally try and build a stronger understanding of. Okay, so that's Eddie from the front, and then we're going to hide my sketches real quick just to get him from the side. And then I'm going to have... What's it called? I'm going to have the mini versions uh, of these designs up in the top corner once I start properly sketching them in order to remember like some of the details of their proportions and a couple other things. So yeah, actually his back does not stick out that much. His back is more like that. It kind of... It kind of sticks out forward, but his jacket sticks out backwards a lot. And then it's got a cute little butt or whatever. I always make my characters way perkier than I plan, like butt-wise. Okay, I forget his legs are ridiculously skinny from the sides, which also is reminding me his knees need to be higher up on this version. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, this poor dude is like 
the worst calf genetics. <laughs> is the fashion this film 60s, 70s inspired? You know, it kind of is. It's not necessarily directly so. For these characters, yes. Um, but the general film very much is because the colors that I want them to be eventually, these are not final colors, by the way. They're more or less final colors. Like the jacket is definitely gonna be brown. His um, his trousers are gonna be this like taupe color. His hair is gonna be black. His sweater is gonna be blue. It's accurate in that sense, but the exact like hex code or whatever you wanna call it, is gonna be um, switched up depending on how it interacts with the CG in my film. Because yes, all my backgrounds are going to be 3D and all of the animation is gonna be um, imported into the 3D animation and so it'll be impacted by the lighting. And all of that lighting, I want it to be Technicolor, as in the type of color film that we had back, I think, what was it? It first came out in like 1939 with The Wizard of Oz, but is most typical of like sort of 50s, 60s film. I really love the way that that stuff looks. So yeah, that's kind of vaguely the direction that not necessarily the fashion, but at the very least the color palette is coming from. But that's all gonna be later down the line. I still have to get to my gosh darn storyboards and then animatic before I can do that. Okay, and then we have the eye, mm, the eye being here. Cool. All right. I think that is suitable. That's quite faint. Let's just beef that up a little for you guys so you can see better. Um, ba -ba -da. Cool. Gosh, I cannot get over how skinny his legs are, poor dude. <laughs> he needs to work out on those parts of him more. All right, that's there. And then we can move Maya, oops. We can move Maya to be next to him. And just for the sake of making it easier for you to see these characters, I'm gonna merge them real quick. I'm just gonna kind of color them, but very, very loosely, literally just so that it's not so faint on the screen for you guys. I'm fine without it. I, I wouldn't normally need to do that, but uh, I understand that sometimes my sketches kind of are hard to see on the stream. Da, 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 da. You know, I have a question. A very unrelated to anything question, but I'm curious. What are your guys' favorite emojis and why? I might ask this in my next YouTube upload, who knows? But I, I don't know. I really have been very much in love with the cheese emoji for a while now, but I think my love just keeps growing. I just cannot stop using the cheese emoji, guys. I mean, if you've been sticking around my channel long enough or seen my website, you should know that I very much enjoy cheese, <laughs> both in consuming it, drawing it, just the aesthetics of cheese, but yeah, it's there, it's a part of my life. All right, this is also um, a nice breakdown to do, like this, the, what I've been doing right now, they're like breaking down the sketches and now I guess I'm kind of creating a silhouette for them is something I recommend you do with other artists. If you find the art of someone is like incredible and looks super interesting and you like their shape language and proportions and so forth, you may as well, I don't know, screenshot their work from Instagram or whatever and do, I, I call this like reverse engineering. You just, um, Try and find the shapes that they used to make their designs. See how, like, the mechanics of these characters. Like, where do those joints fit in? How do they move? Um, all of that is very beneficial to not only building a better understanding of how to make 2D forms feel, um, feel more solid, not necessarily feel like they're 3D, but feel like they could turn in a 3D space. 
which is what solid means. Um, so not only that, or instead it would be, wait, what? I totally just lost my train of thought. So yeah, it's not only that, but also it's kind of fun to see how ridiculous your shapes and proportions can get. Because sometimes a character can feel really believable and super, like, it just moves well. It just feels right. It's appealing to look at. But when you uh, break it down, you realize, oh, whoa, those limbs are like crazy long or short. And oh my gosh, that head is teeny tiny. But you don't notice because it feels good. And so it's almost like a reassurance of, hey, I can really play with proportions and make it work. Um, the other thing it can do is help you inform your own art style. We all have an inherent art style, and I'm not going to fully get into that discussion, but one thing just purely based on shape language when it comes to style is you can, again, see what the commonalities of someone's style, see what makes their work look like their work. Sure, there's color palettes, there's brushes, there's textures that will inform a style, but there's also the base shapes you use. Like with me, I, uh, what's it called? I have a lot of like square, squared off shapes. So like all my triangles and all of my uh, circles are pretty squarish. Like I've, I drew this in my stream the other day. So instead of a circle like this, I kind of, almost like make it like a pentagon or something. Even my squares <laughs> are squared off, where it'll be like, I don't know, like I won't make it perfect. So little things like that uh, can really subtly inform somebody's style. And so if you break it down and kind of unlock the secrets of your favorite artists, then you can either incorporate that into your own work or you can imitate them if you want to but if you're doing that you should give credit and you know that's that needs to be done with a specific purpose and it is not styles don't belong to anyone you know like uh you can draw in any style you want in fact you should be able to draw in anyone else's style if you are working in animation professionally but um in a general sense, it's polite to not just totally rip off people. And besides, if you end up wanting to be like a successful artist, you want to be recognized for your work. You don't want to be recognized as, oh, hey, you're the person that draws like someone else, you know? I'm just gonna switch up the colors so that Maya is different. There we go. Cool, actually, I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. Doot, doot. Boom, there you go. Now you have some slightly better reference I'm gonna group that, duplicate it, flatten it, shapes, because now it's not just my, and I'm gonna hide this one, we don't need it. I'm gonna shrink this down a little, because I don't think my sketches need to be full sized. Oh, actually, you know what, they can be like this big. Oh no, you know what, screw it, they're gonna stay full sized. <laughs> my mind has been changed. You guys have been answering a bunch of questions. I asked what your favorite emojis are, so let me see what you have been saying. Looks like everyone's part of the Sparkle gang. I do like Sparkles very much. I think that they kind of... I like when they are ironically put on to like sugarcoat sort of silly things or bad things. I like it when they're just there for the sake of pleasantry. All of it. <laughs> um, let's see. Did you model them yourself? the 3D models. Oh, yes. The 3D models completely from scratch, including the textures. I did every single thing that you see in that apartment. If you're talking about the 3D sets for this film that are on my website. Uh, my computer is kind of not powerful enough to be working on those anymore. So I might have to wait to get back to school to finish off all of the other designs. But if you do want to see what's left, what I currently have of those designs, those will be on my Patreon. I have one set of screenshots up on there, but they'll be more soon, hopefully. Ba -da -ba -da. Do you have any full visual concepts for the final look? Not really. I have some style frames that are on my website, but they're not quite accurate. They look a little bit like I just used some default effects in After Effects or Procreate, but I want my film to actually properly look like 1960s Technicolor. Like the film grain quality to feel like that and the color palette. Um, 
So that's gonna take a lot of experimentation, but before I get that far, I need to storyboard. I need to um, have some animation ready. And you, you guys will be able to join me along the way. I definitely wanna stream at least some of that, so yeah. What did you do to improve consistent forms or features and characters from different angles? I struggle so much with it. Yeah, that's one of the really hard parts as well. If you tuned in, I don't know if you did, for my previous two streams, those ones were for facial expressions. The first one was the sketches, so I would suggest looking at that video. Um, I discussed like making 3D forms of, like the, for example, the head, you know, it's like, is it spherical, is it a box? kind of breaking down and simplifying the shapes to their absolute core and then referencing that at different angles. Um, then when you are done, like if you have a turnaround for example, like I do here, to make sure that that is like your base point proportion wise. So for example, like is the gap between the mouth and the chin consistent between each sketch? Is the spacing between the eyes consistent? Are the, eye are the ears the same shape and so forth? So, yeah. All right. I'm so happy to see someone else maybe going to make a movie in the future. Who knows? It's just so cool to see the evolution. Thank you. I, I really, really hope that I can be built. I don't want it. It's not like building hype. That's not what I want it to be necessarily. Well, that's cool too. But I just want, I want you guys to be here on this journey kind of live with me so you can see my thought process as I'm making the film so you can encounter my issues and my stresses and confusions and things as I'm going along. I do hope to make a making of video once this film is done, which will probably be a year down the line, but in the meantime, I think by seeing this come together live, it's just, I don't know, I this is something that I wish I could have seen when I was like really just starting out with animation, just being able to follow along with the making of something. So yeah, anyway. We got some funky emojis up in here. Sparkle Gang for sure. I love the like eye mouth eye combo too very much. <laughs> Cucumber's good, squid's good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Versatility, murder, illicit activities, arson. They yes, you you guys know exactly what's up with the the use of sparkle emojis. Um, you have very unique shape language. Thank you, Luna. I I, I hope so. I don't know. I really want to have a unique art style, so I hope it feels unique enough. I don't, I don't know. Um, Comic Court has said, I've been thinking about style lately, mainly because how I want to improve my lines, so I'm trying to be conscious of what kind of lines I use, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's really good. I think it's important to be intentional with your work because that's what makes me feel professional. I personally think that the line between a good and great art is when something is done with purpose, when it is, I'm sure some of you can guess the word I'm about to say, when it is specific. <laughs> that is still my favorite video that I've made recently and I think that it is well worth the watch. I'm, I know I'm promoting my own content, but my video about being specific is I think possibly one of the most important things I think I've made, so anyway. Let's see, my profile pic is adorable. Oh, Kaito. Someone has a profile pic that's really cute. I think you guys all have very cute profile pictures, even the people with just letters. <laughs> anyway, by the way, I've been working on a short film as part of my curriculum as well, and having to do everything about producing something on your own has been super humbling. Yeah, I think that that's kind of why my school wants us to make our own film. One, so we get an understanding of every aspect of the pipeline, but two, it really helps us build a lot of respect for every single aspect. I think it can be very easy to assume like being a director is the hardest thing or that it doesn't take so much effort just to do prop design or something, but it's like, no, every single part of a film takes serious effort and consideration, especially when you're doing it by yourself, so, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. And also, good luck on your film, E. I, I wish you the best. Da -da 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 -da. It has now just clicked to me that she's British. Yes, I am indeed British. In part. I am multiple nationalities, but yes, British is one of them, hence the accent. Oh my gosh, wait, I got a donation. So Nama said, just wanted to say thank you for taking us with you on this creative journey and sharing your wisdom. That means so much. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I, I'm very honored that you are sticking by and following along. I do hope to be consistent with these streams so that you guys can really, you know, 
get inside my brain, get inside the inner workings of this film as it comes together. So yeah, I'm gonna speed through the rest of these comments because I don't wanna, um, what's it called? I don't, I wanna actually get started on these poses. We're an hour in, so yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Thank, thank you so much for these streams. It's definitely helpful seeing another person's process of making animated film. Yeah, for sure. I, I want to make sure that you guys can see it all. I'm so happy to see the artists just continue your art. I know you're going to go great. I'm going to be in art school in Belgium and see artists like you is very good for learning. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we're, I'm just here to share the love with all of you. Just finished Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Wow, what a movie. Yeah, Mitchell's vs. the Machines is very in line with the type of stuff I want to make. Before they made the film, it's like, oh, I want to do mixed media. I want to tell that type of story. And getting to meet the team behind it was a true honor. They're so smart and funny and witty and just have all the right thing. They're all the right feelings at heart and are making it happen and are changing the world with it. Definitely recommend watching Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Yeah, because I used to not give thought to how I drew something and lately I've been adamant and being intentional. And that was a great video of yours about being intentional. Thank you. Yes. Be specific, guys. Uh, do you have any tips on figure drawing and gesture drawing? Yeah, um, gesture lines. Just make, an, uh, what's it called, lines of action. What that means is you wanna have like a flow to your drawings. You want them to feel organic and like there's some movement or emotion in your drawings. I will give you a very, very brief, quick sketch before I move on. Let's say with Eddie, right? The way that his chest sort of sticks out and how he's got this strong posture has created this kind of S shape almost. And so if you want to draw a sketch that sort of has that S flow, and the energy, the, oh, what's, the flow of energy is in a kind of S shape. And so that can really inform, what am I trying to say? Like the, it can, it just makes something feel better. Wow, I have really lost all of my words. I am not articulating this thought correctly. This guy, I've made him more slouchy. How about this guy? This shape is like a C curve almost. Feels almost like, you're like leaning into something. There's not even any articulation of the body at all, but yeah, they are that. Where we met the team behind the movie? Yeah, so actually Mike Rand and Jeff Rowe, the creators, the writers of it, they both worked on Gravity Falls as well, they both went to CalArts, and they were the guests of honor at our kind of like our graduation, not graduation, my animation program's event called The Producer Show, where the top films of the year get selected and are screened somewhere in LA. And so they got to watch, they got to watch Warm Welcome, which is one of the films that I, I worked on. It's on my YouTube channel. I worked on it with a team. I was only a small part. I could not have done it without my friends. Uh, but yes, Warm Welcome was a Halloween film and that made it into the producer show. And Mike and Jeff got to watch it. I actually met them a separate time as well at like some other event in LA. And Alex Hirsch was also there along with the producer of Mitchell's First Machines, who I've forgotten his name, but he uh, he's like the voice of JFK on Clone High. Like it's just a bunch of really very smart people. Lindsay Oliveris, who is a character designer of um, Mitchell's First Machines. Wonderful people, really, really cool, really talented and really interesting. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna shut up for a second and I'm gonna move on. <laughs> this is so bad. I cannot believe you tune into my streams where I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do a thing and then I don't do it for hours. Anyway, let's see. Okay. Oh, you know, one, ooh, yeah, slippage there. That's great. One other thing I want to show you is something that I have not retrieved yet. Okay. Yesterday I took a bunch of photos. These may not be relevant today because I'm only one person, so um, you can't, like I couldn't do interactive poses, but where did it go? Hang on. There you go. I have a bunch of really cringy photos that I took as reference for my, uh, what's it called? 
for some of the poses. Also, uh, goodbye, good night, get some good rest. Yes, I imagine some of the Europeans are getting to bed. And um, especially if you're further over in Russia and Asia, you probably are almost waking up at this point. <laughs> um, let's see. So I have just a ton of poses that I took yesterday where my hair is looking absolutely disastrous. The back half is curly, the front half is straight for some reason. I guess that's just how it chose to dry that day. Um, so this is me pretending to be Maya. This is me pretending to be Eddie, wearing the same outfit that I'm wearing today with my tag sticking out, great. Me pretending to lean on a car wheel that doesn't exist. <laughs> Uh, now me leaning on the back of a chair that also doesn't exist and now me moving to an actual chair because it made more sense and looking around and um, oh Yeah, you guys are getting a sneak preview to my My setup and you can see me watching the h3 podcast in the background. So Yeah, these are just a bunch of cheesy poses This is me being Eddie dumping a bunch of stuff into a bag and then checking the phone and being awkward and then me trying it from a different angle Oop. Dog, did you just bump your head on the chair? Are you okay? <laughs> um, and then this is a bad throwing drawing, but yes. Okay, so a bunch of reference for individual images. I don't think they're gonna be useful today. They might be in the future, we shall see. Boop. I will get one other set of things up. Um, and that is just some random images I found on, let's move that away from the screen you guys can see. A bunch of random images I found on Google <laughs> of people kissing because that is something I also plan to draw later. Let's see, where am I? School, fireworks, reference, poses, Maya and Eddie. Oh, some of these aren't available for me to view. What the heck? What the crap? Open with... Okay, well I guess I can't open it with that. Hang on. Boom. Okay, so I just have a bunch of cheesy photos of people kissing. That's really gross. Ew. 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 So I might have these to the side because I kind of don't want them up on my stream. <laughs> like it's just, I don't know, I cringe so much at like mushy gushy stuff, yet I have included it in my film. But um, yeah, so that's going to be, I think, to the side for the, if I draw the characters kissing today, we don't know. But yeah, okay. We're not doing that just yet. I think I want to start with Maya and Eddie leaning on each other. Um, there's a bunch of different options for how I want this to look and what could be going on, so I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna sketch a bunch and see what happens. Alright, I think I'm gonna hide my checklist for now. I'm gonna... I'm gonna have a shrunken down version of these guys. I've changed my mind yet again. Joop! Like that big. Cool. Um, let's see. Thank you for cringing with me, Armel. Yeah, we can all cringe together at that. <laughs> so, let's see. This shot that is happening in this film, we are, they are sitting on top of the back of the car. So, um, the car is a convertible. And so if you imagine like this chair is, hang on. So this chair is like the car chair and this is the back of it. They're kind of like sitting up on top because it's a convertible and they can do that. Um, and we are looking at them from the front of the car, which means that we have Maya on one, on this side and then Eddie on this side. <laughs> Look at my top tier drawings, guys. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and so that's something I need to keep in mind. The other thing I have discovered, because of the angling of most of the um, shots that Maya and Eddie are in, it just makes sense for both of them to be left-handed. So that's interesting that they're both left-handed, but they are. 
Um, okay. Alright. Oh, I guess a piece of my clothes is just falling off of me. I don't know what is going on today. Goodness me. Alright. Rebecca Black Friday style, yeah. <laughs> I hate drawing people kissing, I just generally think of drawing characters interacting. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think I have ever drawn any characters kissing. Ever. Not that I can remember anyway. Yeah, I've never done it. I just cringe too much. I don't know, I mean like, bro, I'm a whole ass adult and I just still find it like, ew, it's gross. But not really, I don't know, I just think it's funny. I just can't take it seriously, that's all. Okay, so. Um, in terms of angles, I think, so we can have the car be like, this is a really terrible car, but just to illustrate my point, we could have it be like this, right, where we're looking at it kind of a little high up, we could have it even more dramatically placed, like this, we could have it almost completely flat, like this, also, are we going to be completely straight on? I don't know. I'm not super concerned about that right now because the main thing is just getting the general pose correct. But um, that's that. Just make them nuzzle. Well, it's a specific moment in the film, so I don't think nuzzling is going to cut it. But uh, they're going to be all cutesy beforehand too, which is what I'm drawing now. Um, I'm just going to draw a box, first of all, and the box is going to be kind of where they will sit, just so I have that. Uh, let's make it not quite flat, like that. I'm just going to adjust it even more, boop, cool, just going to have that as a separate layer just because I don't like the way it looks. Okay, so Eddie is in good spirits. He is trying to comfort Maya in this moment and Maya is kind of distracted, but she, you know, she still likes Eddie and doesn't want to completely ignore him. So nah, that's, that's sort of my starting point here. Let's see how long the thing, they're going to look so short because both of their torsos are so short <laughs> compared to their legs. But, um, gosh, also I've never drawn pose sheets before, fun fact. Actually, that's a lie. I've drawn pose sheets, but not like this type, not for this exact purpose. So I'm like kind of nervous. This might go really badly, but anyway. While I'm here, I'm just going to say that you've been a big inspiration for me and my art career so far. Oh, thank you so much, love for Sani. That's pretty sweet of you. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Hmm. Oh my gosh, why am I struggling already? I might have to be silent for a bit whilst my brain processes what on earth I'm working on. Okay. Oh wait, I remember what I was going to do. I'm going to move these guys to the bottom. And then I'm going to have these guys up top. Oh Maya, you were in the way. You were very much in the way. I'm going to move this down. Okay, cool. Back to sketching. Yeah, sorry, there's a lot going on in the screen. What is a pose sheet? What I'm currently working on. If you go to the very beginning of this stream, I describe what it does and what it's for. Okay. Da, da, da. I'm gonna have in this version, Eddie, uh, putting his arm around Maya, around her shoulder. So let's see if his shoulder is somewhere around. Uh, I'm trying to think, okay, so his shoulder's gonna be up like that. These are so unbelievably loose, it's gonna look terrible, but it's okay, I guess. I need like another person here with me to to like use as a body. <laughs> uh, maybe I should like go and get a pillow. 
I'm gonna go run, like sprint my little heart out and get a pillow. Okay, it turns out I cannot sprint because uh, otherwise I would slip and fall to my death in these socks and I accidentally thought made the dog think something interesting was happening. Sorry, puppy. Okay, let's try this again. So I now have Maya. This is Maya for now. Um, I should have taken this like reference sooner. I should have done photos of this yesterday, but it was 3 a.m. I wasn't thinking too hard. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh. Wait, I need to move, wait, I need to move this way so that I can lean this way. Um, he's leaning into her and he is drinking wine out of the bottle. So his other, wait, does that mean, I guess the, their shoulders are kind of even then actually. Uh, and then where is his hand going to be? Maybe it's like kind of sliding down her arm, like here-ish. And he's turned out slightly and his body is also turned out ever so slightly. And hers is turning into him. Okay, all right, well, now I have a pillow at my side. Sorry if it makes a bunch of noise. <laughs> um, let me start all of this again. Whoops, I accidentally took Maya's head with me. Well, I can just draw that in now. Something like that. Also, I'm aware that his head is too short for his proportions, but it's okay. Um, oh my goodness, why is this so hard? I guess his arm is like not on her shoulder directly that feels almost a little cold it's kind of wrapped around her almost so da 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 something like that and then his torso is this big old triangle and it's facing out this way and then his hips are there need to move this down because I have made both of them too long for what their proportions are. So, you know what, I need to get a better eraser. Let's use Studio Pen and make it bigger. Cool. All right. And then that's where their legs will go. And of course these characters are gonna be animated, so they will move around. That's not a concern of mine you know like this is just a part of the pose and the pose will ad ad adjust a little so yeah so glad to see another artist who struggles with poses to the point of taking reference photos with a pillow yeah <laughs> i'm not very good at coming up with poses like i have them in my head but the second i actually try and articulate them properly and like get the details in there i'm done i Again, I did storyboard streaming the other day, even though I was desperately uncomfortable doing so, but I think it's just make, making me a little braver, making me get used to it and, you know, transparency. I want to prove to you guys that, you know, I'm, I'm considered a good artist, right? But I still definitely don't know what I'm doing to a pretty massive degree. So, yeah, we're all learning. Everything you see on the internet is a lie, except for me. I'm the only person who tells the truth ever on this website. But, uh, yes, <laughs> that's not true. But I'd like to think I tell the truth. <laughs> I do. I don't know why I wouldn't. Uh, I'll figure out what his arm is doing later. I'm going to block in Maya now. Um, so I'm going to have her shoulder kind of turned in. And maybe, let's see. <sighs> so now she's leaning the other way. Now, now the pillow is Eddie. And 
I like the idea of her kind of holding on to onto him in some shape or form so that it's reciprocated so she's not just completely being held. You can't see but I am like holding with this hand which is what I would want her to do too. Um, she's more curled in on herself so her shoulder is like up by her chin. Um, her knees are going to be together. She's kind of scrunched over so she's like almost like fitting into the nook of of the shape that Eddie has made with his arm. So, yeah. Also, can we admire how gigantic this pillow is? Why is it so big? This is so bougie. Anyway. <laughs> I can't imagine streaming while drawing. Yeah, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. No, I do know why, but... Boy, I don't think I have the confidence for it. But I, here I am. Okay. Um, I'm just drawing another layer because I don't know what exactly is happening right now in terms of how I want Maya to look. Okay, actually, trying something new. Her head is a little too far away because then it means her butt's going to be too far away from, um, from Eddie. They're going to be like real smushed up together and all adorable and all that jazz or whatever, ew. I did not buy this pillow. Um, this is not my pillow. I am living with my brother, so it's his pillow. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, whoops, this is all the wrong layer. That's not what I wanted. I need to stop getting hung up on like the little details of like the shape of Eddie's chin right now because it's so off that attempting to fix it is not going to do anything. It's not going to make the pose better anyway. Um, all right, let's refer to the torso shape. So her torso is the tiniest touch longer than Eddie's. Not torso, sorry, her hip area. So. I'll make that a little bigger, and then I guess like that kind of shape there for the torso, which still makes the head kind of weirdly placed. I guess it's like in like that if she's leaning so far forward. Um, okay. And she's looking down that way, where well, her eyes are all the way up here. And then her leggies are gonna be. Yeah, that seems about right lengthwise, because her hip starts out here. Well, out here. Ah, no, it's not. I made her hip stick out too much. There you go. No, 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 sorry, the AC just decided to turn itself on. That's cool, I guess. So, sorry that you have that as background noise now. And then... She's got long legs. That kind of... You know what? She's turned to the side slightly, so... Her knees are also going to be turned to the side, meaning that I don't want her to like break it. Your knees are a hinge joint, right? Like a wrist. They don't really rotate like a ball and socket joint, like your shoulder or your hip. So they can only really go one way. And so it doesn't really make sense for your knees to turn out super far. It kind of is unnatural and uncomfortable. So I'm only turning them out enough that it feels logical where her knees are still together, you know that like awkward pose where your toes are turned in, that thing, but within the realm of her proportions. All right, okay. Um, like something like this, I guess. I don't know. 
but they really do have ridiculously long legs, although that is a bit too long actually. Let's squish them. That's not squishing them, thank you. A bit more. Actually no, that's fine. It's all of this that needs to move. And I like that. Cool. Alright. Um let's see. I'm not sure what her uh her other arm her, what I'm not sure what both her arms are doing. Also, I think each sketch, because they're quite complex, is gonna take multiple layers of like a of sketching. Like currently we have four layers on the go for one really loose sketch. Once I feel like I've got some basic shapes that work, then I'll crunch them together and draw over the top and make a new layer that is a little tidier. Okay, let's see. Maybe her arm can like kind of slip behind Eddie's and then she like holds it. No, that looks too tangled. Oh boy, why is this so tricky? Yeah, it looks like her chest is way too high up and everything. This is, none of this is working the way I want it to. It's okay though. Like that is that, and then that is that. Because she's got a skinny torso just like Eddie. Although his is even skinnier than hers. Really, his needs to be like that. Okay. I'm gonna erase that here. Can I liquefy tool? Actually, wait, I need to combine all this except for the box. There you go, there you go. Cool, that's close enough. Anya, what time do your streams start? I've been getting up a little early and have been wanting to catch more streams. Uh, I don't have a consistent schedule. And I might try and do some late night for me ones so that people in Asia and like the further parts of Russia can tune in from time to time because I do know I have an audience there. But at the minute I've been starting 11am uh, Pacific Standard Time. Typically somewhere between 10.30 and like 10.30, 11.30ish, around there. But if I'm not live you can always catch the, the VOD afterwards. I, do, I will keep them up. I may have them unlisted, but I'll have them in a playlist at the very least. But for now, they're, they're just up and public on my page. Okay. Gosh, I am really struggling with figuring out how I want Maya's arms to be. Well, in the meantime, I guess I can draw Eddie's ridiculously skinny legs. So his legs do join kind of at the front part of his torso -y thing, so that's something I can keep in mind. I'm gonna have his knee up against Maya's knee, you know, the huge, make it all cutesy and all that jazz. And then I want, let's see, I want this leg to be out wide, he's manspreading guys. Typical terrible men in there. Man spreading? Oh no. Also, I definitely man spread. My legs just don't like to to be all tight up, I guess. And then I kind of want his, because his legs are longer, they probably don't squarely sit on the seat. I think he's got them p turned out partly because he needs that extra length like by being diagonal so that his feet don't get like scrunched up and he doesn't have to lift his knees too high. So I'm going to have his ankles like turned out, if that makes any sense. So we'll be able to see the bottom of, of the foot that's furthest away from us. Something like that. Um... That is not correct proportion-wise, thankfully, because I kind of want to push it even more. 
like that. Oh gosh, you got a bendy leg, brother. Maybe somewhere in there. Oh no, I've really wobbled him up so much. Poor dude. <laughs> sweaty thighs are the worst. I don't know if it's necessarily sweaty thighs. It's just like, I guess I just don't have the muscles to hold myself together or something. I don't know. Um, but yes, yeah, sweaty thighs do suck. Those are, that's annoying. To have... Um... Okay, something I'm already noticing with what I've got so far is I don't think that it feels like they're really affectionate towards each other. And I think we need more of a lean. I didn't establish like a line of action for either of them. And you can tell because now it just doesn't feel so, like I said, affectionate. So here I have uh, adjusted them. Well, I've adjusted Eddie. I think Maya's okay. I don't want her head to be too in the way of his face though, so... This will be fine for now. Okay. I think I'll make her... Wait, oh, that's his shoulder. I think I'll make her shoulder up here and make her elbow kind of hidden. And then I'll just have her hand resting on her thigh. That's probably the easiest option. And she could possibly be holding her phone in that hand or something. Actually, her, arm, her shoulder needs to be further forward. Something like this. I don't know. And then we can have the same happening here. Maybe. Sorry if my sketches are super indecipherable. This is like the way, this is about as messy I get as I get. <laughs> um, oh wait, her legs are still connected in the wrong spot here. Okay. I think here she can be like holding onto, onto Eddie's thigh. How about that? And then he is more turned to the side because he's drinking. Hang on. Okay, so he's like this. Angle-wise, bottle turning down, but his arm is still pointing up. Noted. Like that. Lengthwise, his forearm is a little longer than his... What's it called? His forearm is a little longer than the upper arm. I'm going to redo his head now that I've got everything else blocked in. And also I made it gigantic by accident. I'm going to make the bottle something like that. Oh wait, something like that. The thumb is coming up from the bottom like that. The fingers. I'm kind of pointed away from the body. Like that. But now I've not left much room for his head. So I'm gonna adjust it to be like this. I'm gonna adjust this to stick out more. We can mess with proportions a little bit, you know, they don't have to be completely accurate each time because the priority is to have the pose be readable you know so yeah and then he's gonna be tilting up because he's drinking da, da, da. something like that gonna make this more in line with the rest of his body in the direction that's leaning like that which actually means this can go back to being kind of how it was earlier I can use the warp tool real quick that'll be easier there you go 
cool. <sighs> All right, just because you draw doesn't mean you can animate. Yes, drawing is studying life. Animation is studying motion. So you gotta do both, they're separate things. And the 12 principles of animation is a really great place to get going. Also, I am hungry, so I'm gonna eat just straight up chocolate chips because I feel like being incredibly unhealthy today. Um, yeah, you guys are catching me being a total slob. Sorry if the sound is annoying. Ugh, okay. I forgot that I had this pillow in front of me this whole time. Hmm. So, I'm gonna flatten. Oh no, I'm not. I wanna keep the box separate. I'm gonna flatten the drawing of the characters. And I'm gonna try something out, and that is flipping the canvas. I'm scared. I'm scared it's gonna look weird, but it kinda doesn't. Her, Maya's head is still misplaced. It needs to be further forward. That's the main thing that I'm seeing. And I also think that uh, I wanted, I wanted, uh, what's it called? Eddie's arm to be like holding her and be really affectionate, but it kind of looks like it's just limply at her side. So those are some tweaks I would like to make now for this version. We are probably gonna draw this Seeing as we're an hour and a half into the stream, I might just end up having just this be what we do today. But, you know, a variety of this type of pose, I mean. Okay, I'm gonna just change up the brush color just so it's easier for us to see. I'm gonna have more chocolate. Nom nom nom. Is there like weird stuff you guys snack on? Stuff that is not like supposed to be eaten on its own. Cause I do this all the time. Anyway. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Gonna steal Eddie's face over here for a second. Just because it's faster. Oops. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Okay, that's like very base, very rough. But actually, it's not the correct angle, so I'm only using that again as a base. Where now? His eyes are going to be like further up. His nose is going to be even higher. His cheekbone thing is like all the way up here. And then I don't know what his mouth is gonna look like. Like, um, what's it called? As he's drinking from the bottle. I kind of, I might as well just figure that out when I animate. It's not that big of a deal. It's only one shot of him doing it. But for now, I'm just gonna do like that cheesy little squiggle shape. Tubs of buttercream on my crack snack. Oh my gosh, that sounds so unhealthy and I would love it. Marshmallows definitely count, Jacob's cream crackers. Pickled ginger, okay, Parker, you are not, there's nothing wrong with you because same. I love like eating pickled ginger. I treat it, like you know how it's meant to be like a palate cleanser for sushi? I don't do that. I like just eat it as if it's part of the meal. So, based take. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Something like that. This is still meant to be like a super base level drawing by the way. So I'm adding more detail than I should be. But this is one of my learning curves is I'm too... I get polished at like the wrong times. So... Yeah, don't follow my, well, I mean, you can follow my advice, but don't, you know, let's not monkey see, monkey do it. Do as I say, not as I do. There you go. Okay, then his head, 
It's connected to his neck here, but actually I want to tilt it back more again. And that makes his shoulders a little uneven, but that's okay. Because we'll fix that now. Like that. And then his leggies go here. At this point, I'm still doing like, oh, how would I describe it? Just the proportions, I'm not adding the clothes on top yet. Like just the skeleton kind of. Although to be fair, there's not too much to add to either of these characters. I think most of the outfits are reasonably skin tight, kind of. How are Eddie's shoes looking? Okay, so bub, bub. Okay, like that. Also, it's been a while since I've drawn these characters, so... And I've never drawn them in this level of detail before, so it's like... <laughs> what is it? Um, this is literally the first time I've ever drawn these guys properly in these designs, full body. So, yeah. Also, okay, I just realized my views are doing so well today. I'm deeply thankful that I have 106 of you tuning in. Oh, okay, it's dropping off now as I say it, that's funny. But like we have put, we have been pretty consistently hitting that like 100 viewer bar, which is really awesome. I think my first stream was kind of around 50. So we've basically doubled who's tuning in uh, today. So thank you, seriously, thank you everyone for sticking by and willing being willing to spend time hanging out with me <laughs> yeah it really does mean a lot and i know youtubers say it all the time and it's hard to sound sincere but I, like i can't overstate how much i appreciate that like yeah thank you also am i like rubbing all my makeup off probably whoops whatever i'm so not used to wearing makeup i never do unless i'm on stream so Hmm. Okay, I'm also gonna keep my and Eddie totally separate in this sketch still. In fact, I might keep them separate the whole way along for the sake of um, being able to study each character separately, if that makes any sense. So yeah, um, I wanna like make sure that it looks like he is, his chest is kind of puffed out almost. So I'm gonna do that with some contour lines. Yeah, that's close enough. All right. Da, 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 da. And I have to keep checking in with my references to make sure that they make sense. Okay, his forearm is not, you know what? His forearm is maybe two thirds of the length of shoulder to shoulder. So that is how I'm gonna guess reference wise where his arm should belong here, which means in the, in the first sketch I did end up drawing it too long. Again, I can tweak things to make the, uh, what's it called? I'm trying to tweak things so that the pose reads better because that's more important. Let's see. Saf Tarby says, you keep showing up in my recs and decided to check you out today. I have no clue what's going on, etc. but I always enjoy, enjoy a good art stream. Thank you. Well, if you're curious, I am working on a film, a short film, and, and blah, 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 animated entirely by me called Fireworks. If you want to read the script, you know, spoilers, warning, uh, that is available on my website, which is linked in the description. It is a series of three vignettes of different groups of people preparing for the fireworks is this event and um if you want to see some of the work in progress i've got it is on my website alongside the um what's it called alongside the script and is also on my patreon if you want all of the stuff i've got so far and i'm going to keep updating that one but thank you very much for tuning into the stream. Thank you for telling me that I'm popping up in people's recommended. That's pretty nice. <laughs> so it's nice to know that YouTube hasn't completely abandoned me. Sometimes it feels like that. 
but uh, you know, you never know what the algorithm's doing. Then again, I kind of don't mind. I say kind of. My goal in life is to inspire people and, you know, make interesting educational content. But like, if my work isn't being shown to anyone, then how am I achieving that? But at the same time, it's like, if one person gets inspired by me, that's that's already doing a lot of work, and I'm very appreciative of it. Um, hey, French animation student here. Just jumping in quickly to thank you since you're the one that gave me the courage to take the leap and study animation also. Oh my gosh, wow, that's a big one. Thank you so much. I hope you're doing well, and I hope that animation is treating you kindly. Um, I was wondering why those two big dots on your face. I don't remember seeing them last stream. Sorry if it's a rude question. Oh, it's okay, they're stars. Um, because I have pimples and they are like pimple patches. <laughs> yeah, they, you can see it better when I'm full face cam, but for now they're just, it look kind of silly. Tough question here. What do you think of the discrepancies between animation schools in terms of job hunting, etc.? How did you build your connections to get gigs at Netflix slash Lego? So Lego was through my YouTube channel. They found my work on here and were like, hey, we like your stuff. Netflix was through my school. Not like my school didn't help me, but we have events at CalArts called like Portfolio Day, and those are the days where a bunch of different studios, around 50 studios, including like all the major ones, come to the school, or recently it's been online, um, and they look at your stuff, which is really awesome. And occasionally people get job opportunities from it, and that was what I had. And so uh, my belief when it comes to art school and animation school is I am not paying for learning to animate or learning software. I can do that anywhere for free. I have phenomenal teachers and I learn so much from them and I learn so much from my peers. But the fact of the matter is, is that is not an exclusive to CalArts thing. The thing that is really, really vital to me in terms of what makes a good animation school is the connections they have. And so CalArts, for example, is physically close to Burbank and Glendale, which are kind of like the animation capital of the world, or at least the, the Western world. And um, so it means that we have a bunch of industry professionals physically close all the time. They can come and give guest talks or come and drive up and take a look at our work. It means that recent... Um, recent grads, you know, alumni, that network is very strong because we're all still close to each other. So that is the benefit to art schools and job hunting. But it, you know, so it makes the job easier, but it doesn't make it impossible if you are not in a school like that. I think what's really important outside of it is to do your own hunting because, well, even at Cal Arts, right, we are given so many wonderful opportunities, but if you squander those chances if you don't make the most of them then you're not going to get a job soon like that's the fact of the matter have a strong portfolio reach out to people online you know via linkedin instagram share your portfolio with recruiters and so forth and that is kind of the best you can do you know some of it is a waiting game some of it is a bit of luck of who finds you at what time you know right place right time but it is definitely not impossible and within a certain scope you know your chances are just as equal no matter where you are who you are where you're from so connections and culture surrounding yourself with great people there's also probably a prestige going to cats of um yeah CalArts has a reputation for you know having really good students because our acceptance rate is so low um but it's on like we have this running joke of like oh the cow arts mafia in the industry where wherever you go there's always going to be someone from cow arts but and so it's like if you have someone up at the top of a job from cow arts they're kind of going to know culturally the vibe of what you do and how your upbringing in the industry has been so far um, as opposed to like if you're from another school, but it means that sometimes you get ostracized just the same because uh, What's it called? Because you have people who are, didn't go to Cal Arts and kind of assume we're all really snooty and uh, Think we're better than others, which is so untrue like literally no one at Cal Arts thinks we're better than any other art school I think that's really dumb uh, we just 
have a very specific type of discipline that is established at the school doesn't make us better. So, um, yeah, it, it has its pluses and pros and cons and so forth. If you're using a pen, display, drawing tablet, how do you use Procreate on your laptop? I'm using Procreate on my iPad. It's in front of me right here. But because it's connected with a wire to my computer, I'm able to go on QuickTime. And because I'm using a, what's called a MacBook. So you, uh, what was I saying? Oh uh, my gosh, wow, words are just leaving my head today. Oh yeah, so you open QuickTime and then you can like, I think it's called like start a new movie recording and it can select your iPad as one of the screens that it films. So that's what I have. Like if you can see, I've got this recordy thing. I haven't actually pressed record. It's just watching my screen. So that's that, nice and easy. Yeah, you can't use Procreate on, an, on a laptop, unfortunately. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Maya for a second. I'm gonna have to fix Eddie's arm. It still feels very static and and unloving so you know we'll get there the other thing that i want to try and do it's going to be tricky but i really want to try is preserve the graphic quality of these designs even when they're posed because i think it can be very easy to kind of fall out of that if that makes any sense where I just focus on the pose, but then they end up looking almost too human. Because proportionally, they're still going to be kind of funky looking, sure. But they're not um, necessarily going to look super shapey and designed. So I want to hold on to that. But that's kind of something to... It's something to keep in mind from the outset, yes. But I think it's going to be something that I really focus on when I'm cleaning up. Uh, yeah, as in like when I'm getting to the inking stage more or less. So yeah Okay, all right. Oh my why are you proving to be so difficult right now? I want her to be like this Actually, I don't I see I don't know where the top of her torso actually ends But I am moving her head, so let's do that now And make it like the tiniest touch smaller. Actually, no, this is about right because her head's bigger than Eddie's. Yeah, her head is bigger than Eddie's. Not by much, but by enough for me to acknowledge it. Okay, so grab that. Maybe tilt. Oh, nope, let's turn magnetics and snapping off. Let's tilt it. Come on. What on earth? Oh, I love it when my iPad freezes. Hmm. That was weird. So I guess let's try that again. <laughs> Hopefully it won't freeze this time. What? Maybe my Apple pencils stopped working? No, it's fine. Are you guys seeing this? It's like not letting me move my drawing. Okay, my uh, last time this happened, Procreate like hardcore crashed. So I'm just gonna screenshot this real quick, just in case it decides to destroy all my progress. And we, this might be a ticking time bomb. This, my iPad might crash at any moment, which I love for me whilst I'm streaming. Yeah. Let's try again. In the meantime. This might be futile. Oh, yeah, okay. Now it decides to work. Cool. Love that for me. <sighs> Technology, huh? Wait, it's this way. And then this way. And then... It looks like Eddie's arm is her arm and she looks impeccably uncomfortable because of it. Whoops. Okay. No, I think she still needs to move down a teensy bit. Like that. Are you on a different layer in cases like this? I use a different layer in the opposing colors. It's obvious to me I can see where they're interacting. Yep, yeah, um, I'm on a different layer. I haven't bothered with a different color 
which I probably should. In fact, I might switch up in a second, but um, I don't feel so bothered and like I can still see what's going on. So it's fine. Mm. Let's see. Okay, so her arm is gonna come in like that. And then it's gonna come in and sit between her legs like that. Proportions, proportions. Yep, that seems fine. I guess we don't need to see her hand. Actually, it feels almost like a cop out with her hand being there. Hang on. Gonna do some posing. Um, her legs are together. So she doesn't really have too much space to put her hand unless it's like fully slipped in between her legs. So maybe she can have it resting. I know you can't see me, but I'm like pl putting my hand around my legs, trying to figure out where to place them in this drawing. Okay, yeah, she can have a wrist up here. It would be this sort of angle and then finger, finger, finger. Um, cool. Um, let's see. Do you have any tips on transition from static drawing to animation? Study when prepping for art school. Definitely study the 12 principles of animation because, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, uh, drawing is like the study of life, like just, just things, you know. Um, but then animation specifically is the study of movement, energy, flow acting and all of that so um keep that in mind when i rough out limbs i always carve them as i do a diva gesture drawing when i sketch even when i'm drawing realistically is real limbs are not perfectly straight yes i almost always do like different curvy things too but not in this case which can make them feel a little static but for this specific drawing, I'm not finding it too much of an issue because like, I'm going to make sure that that flow is built in into my line art. So, yeah. Um, all right. Okay. Oh, I just realized I can get rid of this goofy layer of this dude's face. I'm going to flip the canvas again. I just realized we've been working flipped for a while. So, Eddie's hair is not symmetrical. I want to get back to him just because I'm procrastinating and working with Maya. This, well, this part of his head, I'm reversed, so I'm very confused at what I'm looking at on my screen. This part of his fringe thing is shorter than this part, so got to keep that in mind. Uh, something like that, I would imagine. Nope, not like that. Hang on. Something like that. On that side. And then... I don't want there to be any tangents in this sketch, so that's currently what I'm trying to figure out. Mm. Maybe... Somewhere along these lines. I don't know how I feel about that being so close to his cheek. He looks kind of douchey. I guess I've taken away so much of his forehead space that now his fringe is kind of a little misplaced. And because he's leaning back, like the physics is going to be a little different too. Let's just undo all of this. Let's start again. I'm going to start off with the bulk of his hair, which is going to be... I don't know if the hair is going to be flowing on both of these guys because they're technically out in like a kind of windy place, but that's going to be a lot of animation for me. So I have to decide that pretty soon. Well, I guess for like a cute pose, we can make it flowy, you know, might as well. Mm. 
something like that. That's close enough. And then, let's see. Uh, new layer for this hair because it's going to mess me up, I can tell. <laughs> don't mind me just staring at myself trying to do, work some stuff out. I don't want his hair to flop back necessarily. But it might have to, especially if there's wind in his hair. And I do actually have that in one of his facial expression poses, whatever you want to call it. So, oh, you know what? That looks fun. <laughs> he looks so dramatic. So I haven't watched Stranger Things since season two came out and that's the and I haven't watched any of season three or four and I don't plan to but whatever Joe Keery's character's name is it kind of he reminds me of that character Eddie does if that makes sense so we can work with that <laughs> lol he looks so silly <laughs> okay and then Maya, let's flip Maya to be more blue. Because now I am getting a teeny bit tangled. Cool. Um, hmm. So she could be like holding on to something to do with his like jacket or. Um, she could do the whole holding hand on thigh, which is what I, which I, what I started with already, which I think might be nice, but it might just be a little, there might not be so much clarity, or actually, you know what, no, I think it's fine. Uh, I just want, okay, I'm gonna put it in, I want there's a, there to be a tiny bit of a gap here between her arm and like the silhouette of Eddie to make him still feel kind of that skinny thing. Wait, is Joe... Wait, is his name also Eddie? Joseph's character is named Eddie? Wait, I need to do some research now. Is it really? That's so funny. I didn't mean to name him that. So, wait. I'm so confused. Uh, what it, okay, hang on, Joe Curry, Strange, Stranger Things, I like how it's like, Joe Curry, Stranger Things hair, I feel like my hair looks like that sometimes, also wait, what, he is 30 years old? Didn't think so, no, his name is Steve Harrington, I was re, I was misreading whatever happened in the chat apparently, okay, anyway. <laughs> So, um, uh, his character's name is Eddie Munson? Wait, what? I th but it says Steve Harrington on- am I being stupid? I think I'm being stupid and I'm just not gonna find any answers. I'm okay with that. Because I need to move on and focus on this and you guys don't need me faffing about, um, looking at Stranger Things characters, aka a show I haven't watched properly. Anyway, <laughs> Um, let's see, I also don't want um, it there to be too much tangenting between the arms and legs with now, uh, oh Joseph Quinn, I don't know who Joseph Quinn is, I, okay, <laughs> I need to stop, is <laughs> I'm losing my little tiny mind right now. Um, hand here, fingers here, no, that's too far, Her, the, the foreshortening doesn't work then, it needs to be much tighter in, like this, because like, look at the length of his leg here compared to here, right, because of perspective, so, um, so we need to make sure that the same applies to her arm. 
and I don't want to cop out and have her arm hidden away so yeah right let's see uh, you know what, let me hide the under sketch for a second that might help clean things up I'm also gonna fix Eddie's kind of broken looking arm that's not wrapped around Maya don't worry actually you know what, let me remove it like right now why does his head suddenly look so big compared to how it usually is? I think I made his head too big. No, no, I didn't. I guess it's just, I don't know what is going on. You guys, this is really hard. But this is why I'm doing this now rather than when I'm animating because this would completely mess up the flow of me animating um, or even like storyboarding. Totally would mess it up. And I don't have time to do that. Okay, new approach. We're gonna have... We're gonna have Maya come in and hold... Hold him at the waist. Does that make any sense? Let's see. Let's test out with this Eddie, shall we? Um, leaning... I'm trying to think like how big his waist is, because he's got a tiny waist. Something like that. And I guess it's going to rest like kind of on his hip. Mm. Yeah, I think that works. <laughs> All right. That's good to know. I like how her little arm is this weird heart shape at the minute. That's not what the plan was. Uh, something like that. I don't want her to accidentally be like reaching to his crotch though, that's like a little dodgy. You know what, let's have the thumb point up and then something like that. You can shorten the thumb. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'll tidy that up later. Okay, let's see. Let's focus on fixing Eddie's arm now, seeing as everything else is more or less kind of there. I'm gonna keep it visible but super low opacity just so that I can use it as a base point. Um, I mentioned before that having his hand just like on her shoulder is kind of cold, but when I say that it's like if you have your arm like this and the hand is like placed on the shoulder like that. But what I'm imagining here is he's really like bringing my in to his side and then his hand is coming back over onto her shoulder. So that's different. That's much more intimate feeling. So we'll keep the elbow in more or less the same place and then find a way to make it look cute without breaking his elbows. And also without making his arm like freakishly skinny. <laughs> and this might end up being a kind of a mess once I bring his sleeves back in. So I'm going to see where that goes. Actually, you know what? I said we we're going to do a bunch of sketches. I think we will. But with this one specifically, I want to polish it off. I might ink it today. Just one, so you guys have more interest and stuff to see. And two, so I can just get a baseline judge of if this looks decent or not. I guess, yeah. Mm -mm 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 Look at those little thingies. I will make them longer, but not for now. Okay. No, that sucks. <laughs> Oh, why is this so hard? Well, let's copy that, then delete it. Then let's paste again. Just so I have that version in existence, but I'm going to hide it. I'm going to keep the arm separate this time so that I don't have to do that again. Um, maybe he can also put like his arm around Maya's waist, how kind of like how she's done it for him. That almost looks like he's trying to hoist her up somewhere though. That's kind of weird. 
And his arms are so long that it's like, I don't know what, what to do with his hand afterwards. Mm. Let's put this back here and then have this forearm go up and instead we can try and holding her hair almost. He looks like he's kind of roughhousing her and I don't want that. I don't know why I'm struggling so much today, but um, I guess it's going to be in the nuance of how I treat like the limbs and the digits and so forth. What about putting him putting his hand in her hips leg? I was thinking that, um, but her phone is kind of in that spot and I don't know how to explain it, but like her, her lap, like there's a lot of focus there throughout the film and I want him to be kind of detached from it, if that makes any sense. I definitely could do a version though. Always worth a shot. I also don't want there to be too much tangenting between her arm and his arm, but let's see. Why? This is so difficult. This definitely could work. I'm not going to exclude it, so I'm going to keep the drawing there, but yes. Okay. Alright. Mm. Hmm. Well, this one isn't that bad. I don't know why I was freaking out earlier. It's less roughhousey looking than this one. Hmm. Screw it. I'm gonna now do new layers of just adding the details of the coat and the clothes and stuff. And then I'm gonna ink it and hope for the best. Let's flip it horizontally again, just because I feel like it. Alright, so his shoulder things go up and up. And then... It's got these big old poofy sleeves. So this is why I didn't really feel the need to bother with, um, what's it called? Like curved arms necessarily, because the sleeves are going to completely obstruct both of these characters. And they're going to add that curvature in because they're puffy. So, yeah. Maybe she could hold his arm to avoid the tangent. Very true. Maybe my is also close to Eddie's. I, yeah... You know what? Actually, I can do it now because I've made him taller, right, um, than he was earlier. And so earlier I was worried that her head was going to clash with his too much. But now with her hunched down and him with a very straight back, it should be fine. So, yeah, we can do that. Um, I'm going to have to adjust his leg real quick so that... So that we don't clip through each other, because that would not be ideal. That isn't typically how these things work. Physics. Oh, whoops. Wow, what's going on? I thought I had this layer selected. Okay. Oh, this is going to be hard, because I actually really like the way that I drew that knee. Mm. Okay, I guess I can... Warp, use the warp tool here. Let's try that. Woo. That looks so gross. Something like that. Whoops. Yeah, that'll do. Whatever. Anyway. Right, this is the clothing layer. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on his boots. Let's see. His boots kinda go up to around here. And then they go zoop. Zoop zoop zoop. Zoop zoop. Just him and his bagginess, I guess. 
And then same sort of vibe here. There's no full rhyme or reason to how how his uh, trousers work, but this should be fine. Okay. And then I want to bulk up his foot zone. Foot zone? What am I saying? Goodness me. All right, that should work for now. Then his jacket's gonna be kind of tricky. So his top is about here. Sticks out a decent amount. Then his, I might have to button up. No, I don't want him to have a buttoned up coat. It's just gonna be trickier for me to animate, that's all. Um, Something like that, let's see. Cool, that works. And then his coat, his jacket kind of does stick out quite a bit at the back. So I want to honor that there. I mean, you won't be able to even see it, but it's just there for me to know it's there. And he has this like armpit shape thing. Okay, then something in here, something in here. Is that about right? I guess so. Whoops. Again, I'm gonna, well, welcome to the foot zone. Bro, I was watching Ethan Klein. I don't know why I watch the po that podcast still. I mean, I kind of love it, but it's also trash. But I'm very aware that it's trash and I enjoy it for what it is. But anyway, um, he was like, he got really distracted midway through his ad reads and was showing everyone like his really cracked foot and I was not paying attention and I was like making food or something. And I came back to that being on my screen, ugh, awful, terrible. I hate feet so much. It's not even funny. Feet are gross, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, let's hide this arm for now. My goodness, why is this terrible? Why is it so terribly difficult to do? This, okay, I'm gonna read through some of the options you guys were suggesting. What about him putting his hand in her hips leg? We discussed that one. Maybe Maya's torso closer, discussed that, and I've changed it. Maybe she could hold his arm to avoid the tangent, good point, I can try that one. Maybe his hands can be tucking her hair behind her ear or caressing her face or arm. Yeah, so that's the one. Oh my god, he made he made A B smell it and Dan because Dan was the one that was like, oh my god, his his your feet stink. That was the, yeah. I'm glad that I'm not the only one who witnessed that episode of the H3 podcast. Okay. So, <laughs> let's see. Um I love drawing feet. Like I think they're a really technically like interesting thing to draw, very technically difficult. But I don't want to like look at them you know you ethan who ethan klein as in h3h3 H3 productions on youtube he's an interesting chap <laughs> time to draw along any suggestions chat oh yeah what do you guys want to what do you guys want to draw mm -mm -mm. uh you know me i'm going to suggest something related to cheese because that is my default so yeah Oh, that's right. So someone said about like the caressing hair thingy. So this is kind of what this pose was supposed to be, but it looked like he's manhandling her um, in this current iteration. Oh, that looks weird. So I will fix that because I think that's going to be our best bet. I think, I hope. Oh, goodness me. Bro, you guys, you'd think that me being a professional is... Am I a professional? I guess technically I am. I like have jobs. I've worked at like Netflix and Lego. I don't know. 
Cowboy dogs, fun. I agree it's trash, but the podcast is kind of comforting to listen to every week. Yeah, exactly. Family, family, family. It's For me, it's just something mindless that I can enjoy and I feel like I'm part of a community that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's not anything to do with my career. It's not anything to do with my friends. Like I don't know, I don't think any of my friends listen to the podcast at school or back like from high school. So it's just my own thing, my own little bubble on the internet. I might be wrong, maybe I have friends who uh, who watch the podcast, but either way we haven't discussed it. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try that. This is where having some reference would be good, but boy, trying to find like cute reference images was so hard because I was swimming in a sea of very NSFW photos. And I know you can turn filters on, but the filters will filter like everything. Cause then it ended up being just a bunch of rough, like not good stuff at all to look at. So, yeah, not gonna do that on stream for sure. This stream will get taken down very quickly if I look up like a uh, couple cuddling, holding each other's hair and stuff. Cause boy, those results like to teeter in the wrong direction for me. Um, oh my goodness gracious. Now I can barely process. You know what, if I evolve Maya's hair a little, not hair, like her whole face, then it might make it easier for me to kind of see what I'm doing. So, mm. I assume her hair thingy is gonna be flipping back seeing as his is. We need some consistency with the wind and how both of their hairs are reacting. And then we need her eyes. She's gonna look down here, I guess. Hmm. Something like that. Hmm. I don't know, I haven't drawn her in like three weeks and so I don't feel very warmed up drawing her right now. But this is, this will be okay. If you guys want to draw some cheese fairies, I would love to see those. You should post them in the Discord when you're done or when you're sketching. Because I'm not going to see them, I mean you're welcome to post to Instagram and tag me but I won't see them. But if you want me to see your cheese fairies, hop into the Discord, link in description and share away. I'd love to see that. Okay. Um, I keep, I feel like I keep going okay. Um, and that must be very annoying, so I'm sorry. Okay, her eyes are a little too high up for once. Hmm, that is very much not my proportions right now, still, but there's only so much I can do at the minute. Did I draw that? No, okay, never mind, that's not her sh mouth. This happens to be kind of perfectly placed where her mouth would be. <laughs> yes, we've got a Discord link in description. I haven't used it in a while, but I am trying to bring it back. So it is, it is, uh, it is there, and I hope you guys enjoy. The more you guys talk in it, the more the community gets built up. So I highly encourage you to be active in there and to give each other some love and support. I'm trying to think how impacted by the wind her hair should be. Probably like that. Yeah, that'll do. Because I also don't want there to be, again, any tangents anywhere. 
<sighs> Gosh, her face looks so weirdly stretched right now. I don't know what's going on, but it's fine. Again, I'll fix it later. And then her dress is like, kind of like that and that. And then the lower part of her dress is like that. And then her sleeves really stick out. That's right. So this is the the part that's kind of tricky is getting everything to sit correctly. Um I see these are even bigger than that really. Something like that. Okay. Hi, can I ask how's your summer going? Thanks for doing these streams. Thank you for asking. Um, my, street, my summer's going fine. I'm kind of nervous because I think we're over halfway there now and I feel like I've barely gotten started. I want to make a proper comeback to YouTube, but it's like school's going to get going all over again before I know it. And that's kind of why I'm doing these streams because this is, what's it called? This is for school, this film, right? Um, and so if I can do it for school and on YouTube, then that means I can keep providing you with content without feeling too too overloaded and all of that. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, so her skirt, or her dress, I guess, is a little ways path, uh, above her knees. That's cool. And it can sit like that. Wait, no, like that, sorry. Boop. I totally forgot how physics works for a second. Mm, there we go. That's close enough. Wow, her head looks like actually messed up. What is going on? I'm trying to figure out why her face looks so messed up. Like, it doesn't look like her at all. It might be her nose? I don't know what I've done. Maybe it's her head shape. It's fine, it's close enough. Okay. And now I have so many layers and I don't know what any of these layers are because I have not labeled them. Classic, you know, the huge. I must say, we've come quite a long way from um, our initial sketch, which is significantly messier. So that's good to have. You said before you get easily distracted, do the live streams help you stay focused? Oh yeah, I would have taken like three or four breaks by now, and I would have been very fortunate if I actually ended up returning to the work. So these do keep me in check. They make me stop procrastinating in general because if I'm promising to stream a, an aspect of the pipeline I dislike, like storyboarding, then it means I'm less likely to give up before I should. So, yeah. Uh, last thing to solve is, what is it? Is that hand of Eddie's? Oh, Eddie, why are you posing? Why are you posing such an issue for me? And here you see a wild Anya Butler really struggling to uh, commit to any pose with this arm because she does not like limbs, apparently. Uh, the easiest would be to like have his hand or his arm like back here you know and just just place down but that's not the vibe i think now that i've drawn her hair though i can he can uh he can like interact with her head or face a little more and gently like stroke it do you animate for netflix or storyboard etc i'm not a storyboarder i have to do it for this film but 
by nature. I don't think it's like a thing I enjoy doing. But I have worked for Netflix. I did animate, uh, I designed and animated a short music video for a kid's film. Kids film, a kid's series called Ask the Storybots. And well, Storybots, I think it's like phonics, something like that. I'm not sure. It was like a one minute music video. It was really fun. I did that last summer. So yeah. Um, hmm. At this point, maybe if I just like get straight into how it would look with the big sleeve, it might be easier. I don't know. Zoop, zoop. Oh, that's going to tangent like that. Wait, now I'm so confused. Where is his arm? Oh, there's his arm. Okay, wait, this needs to be down here then. Okay, I'm just gonna start over. Lol. Which way does the uh, the wrist turn? Okay, so he's drinking. Wait, I'm gonna. No, wait, he is. This is the right way for you guys. Okay, so he's drinking. Glug glug glug. This is now Maya. She's sitting slightly in front of him. Hand is turned in towards her. I guess I can like have his hand kind of do this thing. Oh yeah, that's kind of cute. Have it like caress her cheek like that. You can probably barely tell what I just drew, but that's fine. Because I can tell what I just drew. And that's what's important, because I'm the one drawing this. Alright. I think we're just going to have to move on and deal with it. And then figure it out. Animating is extremely tedious for me too, but I actually find storyboarding even more tedious for some reason. I don't know if I can explain it. If Maya's eyes are a little big and separated, she would look more like her. Yeah, I think you're right. They're a little small because I made them squinty, um, but I think I can open them and make her look down more. But again, I'll figure it out with the inking. I think we can be ready to try round one of inking. Let's see. Goodness gracious. I'm gonna just duplicate this real quick and then flatten this and then hide this so I can just lower the opacity of this whole deal like that. This is not gonna be perfect by any regard. But I wanna try some stuff out in inking form. So here we go. You know what, let's make them bigger. What is over here? Whoops. Just in this scenario, we'll make them bigger. But I think for most of the sketches that I'll do for this post sheet, they'll be smaller. And I'll ink later down the line once all the sketches are in place. So yeah. Okay. Or oh, whatever, I, I poorly labeled all of this stuff and now none of it is applying, but that's fine. Okay, uh, let's start with Eddie because I'm more confident with him. And I'm going to draw them separately and have for now and have like him fully visible because I want to test to see if the weights and proportions do feel right, like the placement of everything. Wow, I made this brush really small. By accident, okay. Mm. I 
actually this one does not need to be near as thick. Like that. And then we can just add some, wait, wrong way. Some lines to indicate the knee being there, kind of. I don't know how that looks. That's probably gonna have to be redone, but that's fine. And then the boot. Boom, boom. These like flat, what's it called? These like totally squared off toes look so ridiculous, but I kind of love it. And then straight here, like that. I kind of don't want to include this line actually. Yeah, let's leave it. The line is going to look like that in the animation too. Ah, uh, maybe we'll see. I don't know how to use. I have never really done any proper line art in Harmony, which is the software I'll be using to animate. So I don't think it's, it's going to be exactly this. I want it to be, but it might not be. So yeah. Uh, not gonna lie, I hadn't thought about animation in any way, but I find your art now working towards animation as a job. So glad to have found someone that inspires me to learn and create. Wow, Marie, that is really meaningful. That's, I still find it like kind of wild that there's people out there who have been impacted by me in some way. It's like, wow, I, th I am very grateful that I could be there in some shape or form, albeit like kind of parasocially and distanted, but yeah, wow. Thank you. <laughs> mm. I don't know if I'm gonna have any like wrinkles really actually in the trousers for, for Eddie because that's gonna be a lot to animate and his jeans are so skinny or his trousers are so skinny that I don't think we'd need to bother with parts like his big sleeves and Maya's big sleeves. That makes more sense to, um, what's it called? To have a little bit of like fabric folding, but yeah. Okay, and then we have it here, like that and that. I forget, did I give him a seam? I did not, that makes my job easier, great. Let's thicken that up there. I'm getting so many notifications on my phone right now. Why? Ugh. And it's all NFT scam emails. That's really great. Thank you so much. I really despise. Like I get a bunch of these spam emails from like, it's like a random name or combination of numbers and letters. And then it's like a check, like .cz, which I think is the, the check thing, like, you know, .co.uk is the UK websites. This one is .cz. That's what all these emails I get are coming from. And I get like hundreds of them a month from this one. It's clearly one type of source because it's always some Collider Craft NFT, whatever. And it's like, first of all, you're an NFT. So I'm not, I, you know, unless I'm really tight, I'm not going to be working with NFTs anytime soon. Second of all, stop pestering me, you're clearly fake. You're doing a really bad job at being convincing. How are you still operating? <laughs> you know? Uh, I can actually open this up a little more because his arms are spread out, meaning that like his, his unbuttoned jacket is like also gonna be pulled back a little. So yeah, it's going to be a little further apart than how it looks in the reference of the turnaround. Which, speaking of, I'm going to have to figure out how to get his lapel in here. I haven't done that yet. Whoopsie. Um, well, let's try that. And then that. Nope, that. And that. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. 
something along those lines. My lines are really wonky today. I think I'm just super tired. I'm really not in the in a drawing mood at all today. But I promised myself I would do this and I've got work tomorrow and this afternoon. So I'm here and I'm gonna get this done. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be streaming by the way today. I think once I finish this I might stop just because like I'm I'm just really tired and I need to use up my reserves for work that I'm being paid to do because I don't make money doing this. I think I make like $10 per stream unless anyone donates. If I make, if someone donates then I get like $15 per stream, which is not sustainable. But I do it because I love you guys and because I like sharing my process, not for the money. Money is nice, that's not the priority. It might have to become the priority at some point, but not right now. Okay. Um, yeah, that's good enough. I'm gonna make this thicker here. Cool. I mean, all of this is gonna be hidden by, what's it called, by Maya's head anyway, but I just want this to work, you know? Do okay, where does the lapel come to? Okay, it's gonna be like that, like that, probably. Bob. I could just move my reference image over closer to me, I know, but I cannot be bothered. Like this, there you go. And then, Tilt down to like here, nope, to like here, and then that's down to here. Gosh, this is hard. Does your line art reflect your character's personality? For example, round soft line art represents a more bubbly character. Well, not quite. Mostly because um, line art is like a style thing for the whole show and you want the whole thing to be cohesive if you i think you might mean shape language possibly because shape language is something that can be adjusted from character to character but the line art is still can still be consistent and feel like a oh, how would i describe it like um line art should be consistent from character to character unless it's very specifically different and consistently specifically different between each character but um yeah i uh i don't really consider shape language too much when it comes to personality like eddie is all pointy and kind of mean looking like he looks like a typical jock but he's a nice guy and he's very caring and I think that's the important thing and that comes through in the acting that's not a um, design choice and it's kind of tedious I think to be really dependent on um, what's it called on like the Disney shape language principles or whatever you want to call them they're a good reference point to have in mind sometimes for sure you know where round is soft and friendly and cute and innocent and Square is really strong and reliable, and triangle is kind of pointy and evil, but that's not that's not what I want to focus on because that's just too predictable and too repetitive, and that's not real life. You know, we don't choose how to look when we're born, but we end up, you know, having a personality irrespective of our appearance, our genetics. Why are the clothes red, brown, and orange instead of blue now? Oh, just with a thumbnail. Just so that they can match my branding. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't mind me being kind of picky about that for no reason. Okay, his lapel is good enough. It's fine. Okay, neck time. Woo, I love neck time. I don't even know what that means. <sighs> Yay, neck time. Okay, and then... I'm trying to debate what angle his neck is actually at. 
Okay, I think it... I kind of... wait, hang on. Let me use my necklace as a reference for myself. Does this film take place sometime in the present or sometime in the past? Well, Maya has a modern mobile phone, but that's kind of like the only real indicator of time. It doesn't... The, time does not matter for this film. It can take place anywhere, is what I would like it to be. I'd like it to be timeless, if that makes sense. Have you thought about streaming on Twitch or are you more comfortable on YouTube? I'm more comfortable on YouTube for now, and it's also where my audience base is, but I do really like the idea of maybe heading to Twitch at some point so I don't clog up my feed. Hang on. I want to... I'm using, like, my Streamlabs to view stuff, so I'm going to transition for a second to my face cam. Which I still don't understand why it's in 3-4 ratio suddenly, but... Uh... Drinking... It's like flat, I guess. Okay, but it's not tilting down, that's for sure. So I'm, ju I'm just trying to figure out the shape of... Uh, not the shape, just this neckline that Eddie's got. And I think it looks fine, the way that I currently have it, so... So we're all good. Anyway, have you thought about stream- oh no, I already read that. Um, is your summer job art related? Ye I have multiple jobs. One is like for my school, I work on student union, I'm also student treasurer, so I've been doing some occasional work associated with that. That is not art related, but it is art school related. I am doing, uh, what's it called? The work for Hornet, which is what I'm going to be doing later today and tomorrow. Hornet is an animation company based in New York, and they do the ads for like Kroger, which is what I'm working on, McDonald's, Spotify, Amazon. Uh, they're a really cool company, and I'm very honored that they enjoy working with me. I actually worked with them from February through to August last year, so yeah. Is there a way to stream to both YouTube and Twitch at the same time? Yes, there is. I, I, it's like an option on my Streamlabs, but I don't even remember if I have a Twitch account. Oh, I think I do. Do I? I'll have to double check the status of my Twitch account first, but I might try that for sure. That might be a decent solution. So yeah. Oh wait, Eddie's hairline. Let's see. His hairline used to be a widow's peak at one point, and I don't remember when I changed it. I like what it is now, but I also really do love drawing widow's peaks. They're just really funny. Not laugh at funny, but just kind of peculiar, interesting kind of deal. Uh, and his nose is also really hard to draw from a uh, kind of upwards angle because he has like a, just such a downturned knows. Any controversial opinion on animation? Um, last time I had an opinion about animation that I discussed in detail, I got very cancelled for it, so I don't know. I'm, I mean, also, I'm trying to think if I actually do have any, any uh, hot takes to do with animation. I don't know, I think animation memes are kind of boring and uninspired, maybe that. No hate if you do them, it's just like, don't you have any, like, is there not something else you can offer? It, they just feel very, like, clout-oriented to me. Um, let's see, other controversial animation opinions. Uh, I think that the Owl House and Amphibia feel way too similar to... Um, Gravity Falls, and it makes sense, both of the creators of that worked on Gravity Falls. But it's like, now everything at Disney seems to be following the same tropes. Uh, so it's like, they're good stories and I really love the characterizations and all of that, but it's like, I've seen this before, can we have something in new instead please? Someone asked earlier, I saw in the chat about Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I wish I could give you my opinion, but it's been so long since I watched it that I don't remember how I felt about it. Like, I was very confused when people were talking about, like, oh, season, was it season four? Like, ruined, like, the shipping, something, something. Why did they do this to this character? I, like, don't even remember what happened, so. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't remember being upset about it when I watched it, but everyone else seems to be very like heated. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what my opinion is there. Okay. Why are you so difficult to draw? Okay, his cheek is sticking out a little bit too much. I know his cheek sticks out a ridiculous amount as is, but that was too much even for me. That's better. Hmm. I haven't watched Gravity Falls, but I've seen The Outhouse and Amphibia. I think Gravity Falls did it better, and it's old, and it's like ten years older. And and that's not like a hate to the creators of. It's not a hate to Matt Brawley and Dana Terrace because they literally like were core parts of Gravity Falls. Like they were, I think, both storyboard artists on it, so they're responsible for a lot of the best moments of that show. So, yeah. I guess that's the only, like, concern I would have in terms of working on someone else's show is I'm going to inject a lot of my own tastes into that project, but then it means that as soon as I move on to my own thing, people are going to start comparing it to the other thing that I worked on. So I think I'm being a little hypocritical, a little too harsh. I'm aware of that, but that's just my opinion. What about Steven Universe? A lot of people hate it, but it has a special place in my heart. Um, I really liked it at one point. I was super, like, desperate to find out the plot and, you know, uncover all the secrets. And I don't know what point it was at, but it really, like, fell off for me at some point. It became too preachy, where it felt very ham-fistedly, like, we're all about love and acceptance here, which is something I wholeheartedly agree with, but it's like, you don't need to tell me that so in your face. Like, demonstrate it to me with some subtlety. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying because, again, it's been so long since I watched it that I cannot even point out specific moments. Um, but my character design teacher from this past year actually was the designer of, well, like, all the main characters. and. He is great um, and kind of gave us some insight into the production of the show, which seems like a, quite a wild ride in itself. Not in a bad way necessarily, just it looks like it was a lot of young artists figuring out... I don't think etiquette is the right word. It's like how much of your personal experiences can you input into a story before it becomes a little bit too personal you know as in not like oh other people are watching your personal life not that i mean where you're being too vulnerable i guess because uh, that can be very damaging and a lot of youtubers face that kind of issue where they open themselves up too much and so suddenly they're under the scrutiny of the internet when they may not be ready for that yeah um so that's that. That's my opinion of Steven Universe. I just shared that, Martina. Um, let's see. Did you ever consider being in the Cal's Experimental Animation Program? How different is it from the character program? I very briefly considered it. Um, when I was at CESA in 2018, one of the stu people who had also attended CESA the previous year and then was accepted into the Cal's Experimental Program was like, no, Experimental's better because like you get to try out more stuff. And sure, I very much love the experimental quality and they get to do things like stop motion and I can't, I don't really have time in my schedule in my program to take any of those classes. But um, I think the primary difference that I can tell is experimental animation studies animation as an art form, whereas character animation studies it as a form of storytelling and a more of a corporate commercial entity which is the direction i want to go because that's more easy to form career-wise and then afterwards once i'm established i can then integrate more experimental qualities into my work and into my schedule so yeah that's that's that but um i have a deep respect for people in the experimental program they always come up with such interesting stuff Stuff that would never have 
uh, crossed my mind in a million years and they're all very talented in different ways. Some very similar to um, to character animators to the point where I'm like, oh, you're not in the character animation program? And then others to being like, again, so other, uh, like the, the focus is just so different yet we're still studying the same discipline. And I think that's really cool. So yeah. Okay, wait, this needs to be more dramatic as does these. Okay, I have spotted where I'm not being graphic enough. This needs to be straight. You need to have a direct angle change here. Cool. I might even get rid of this line. No, I won't get rid of this line, but I will redraw it. Oh my gosh. No. Oh, screw it. I guess I'm just gonna make them all straight lines. But like, not perfectly straight, but almost straight. That's good enough. Boop. Yeah. <sighs> Research versus applied animation could be another t way to say it. Yeah, yeah, that's very true, very true. Do they show experimental at the open show, or is it just character? Um, it's just character. They have a separate event for experimental called Bijou Fest, I believe, which is where they show experimental films. There's actually multiple events for, um, for experimental, I believe, but I don't know anything about them. I haven't had the opportunity to attend one yet. I mean, I did have the opportunity, I just didn't because I was decompressing from finishing weird looking dogs, but uh, yeah. Oh goodness gracious, this is looking worse for wear. I am struggling with angles today, which is not something I'm supposed to struggle with at this point in my career, but here I am. I think I might do my cheap little heart shape tactic thing. Nope, I won't do that. Doesn't look good. I'll do my cheap, swirly tactic thing instead. Do you take inspiration from older cartoons like Pink Panther or Tom and Jerry? Um, not really. I haven't ever watched Pink Panther. As for Tom and Jerry, I loved it as a kid, but I haven't watched that show in... Um... Probably ten years? I don't know. I don't remember the last time I saw it. But I really enjoy the slapstick. I'm not a big slapstick person, but when it's done it's so creatively, like, you know, the old school Tom and Jerry cartoons, I can't help but have a deep respect for it. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, that line could have been so perfect. There we go. <sighs> Why is this so hard? Why is this so difficult? Can I have more chocolate? Oh no, that's oh, that's going to the floor. I have to pick that up so the dog doesn't eat it. Oh no. Can you tell I'm really tired today? Ten second rule. This is a bit specific, but when doing turnarounds, do you prioritize, prioritize dimensionality or design? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I always seem to try and prioritize one or the other. And every time I regret not prioritizing the other thing. Does that make sense? Well, okay. I think the best approach is when you're in sketch form is to prioritize, um, what's it called? Dimensionality, solid drawing. Make it feel like it could turn in a 3D space. And then when you're inking and lining to then maybe take a couple, I wouldn't even call it shortcuts, but like maybe they don't really quite work in a 3D space, but design choices that make a certain shape or silhouette stronger. Um, because when something is moving or perceived to be moving because you're animating it, 
you can cheat. You can, you know, break a couple limbs from time to time, or you can stretch things out unnaturally. As long as they enhance the movement or the expression or whatever it is that they're doing, then you should be fine. So, yeah, it's it's hard. I don't. I'm still very much new to all of this, which part of me is like, I feel almost like a fraud showing this, but reminder, this is not a tutorial. Like none of these streams are tutorials. These are me showing you my current process. The process may change within a few months. It may change next year. In fact, I sure hope it does. I hope I actually improve. Uh, but the purpose of this is to tag you along on my journey so you can see the pitfalls that I fall into and so forth. So, yeah. I kind of want to have like a random hairline there, but I guess Maya's head's going to be there, so it's fine. <sighs> Here comes the tricky part. I think I'm going to... going to close off the jacket and then make like a separate layer for the front part of the arm, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Bro, I am still getting like a hundred plus concurrent viewers. This is wild. Thank you so much for all of you tuning in, especially if you're sticking around. Like some of you, you stick around for every stream I do for the full time, and that is some serious dedication, and I sincerely appreciate it. But those of you who stick around for 10 seconds and then dip, thank you for stopping by. Okay, um... I know that's what I do when I see art streamers. It's like I don't typically stay very long unless it's like a streamer I really enjoy or I'm really curious to see what they're talking about, you know? I'm gonna adjust this here real quick to make it a more pretty line. I don't care if it's not super in line with the, the proportions from the turnaround. I say pretty online. You guys probably can't even tell any difference, but I, I see the difference. And then swoop it. Oh, hang on. There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then I'm gonna thicken it down here. Cool. Easy, right? Not ready. No, something is wrong. And what it is, is, hang on. How do the sleeves look? I think we need to soften this curve because his elbow does not, it's not here. His, it looks right now as if his elbow is actually causing this, um, this curve to happen. But really his elbow is all the way tucked in here. And so I want to express that. Someone asked if I'm going to CTN or Lightbox this year. I don't know anything about CTN. Like, I don't know when tickets and stuff for that come out. But Lightbox, I have not gotten tickets, but I do plan on going. So if any of you are going to be there, it would be lovely to meet you. I'm, like, going to be going with a friend, but then there'll be lots of people from my school, and I'll be, like, meeting up with people from when I went to CESA for the first time in four years. So it's going to be, like... A lot of, I'm going to be all over the place chaotic, uh, so apologies in advance if I talk to you only very briefly, but I would love to meet you and see you. Okay, um, did I take any writing classes? I take, uh, what's it called? Screenwriting for animators, and it is one of my favorite classes I've ever taken. I mentioned on yesterday's stream, I think, that I love producing and I especially love writing. I don't know if I'm necessarily good at it, but it seems like uh, I've been pretty successful so far. And, oh wait, I could have just edited the shape, well, lol. Um, yeah, it seems I've been pretty successful so far and I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, but if I could pursue a career in writing, now that would be more fun, I think, than any of the visual stuff. Because I want to tell stories, and being a character designer is a very limited space. Like, you're not, um, you know, you're telling someone else's story, 
and you're helping shape the characters that tell the story, but you're not, you like you yourself are not, um, how would I say it? You yourself are not the one coming up with like the plot and so forth. And that is what interests me the most. So yeah, I'm gonna, hang on, actually I'm gonna draw the hand in real quick. I'm also trying to really simplify these hands down wherever I can for this film so that I don't bog myself down with, well, hands. <laughs> and then erase, and erase, and then merge. And now I have to make some changes because now the neck of the bottle does not align with where his mouth is. Now it does. So I'm gonna erase this. Whoops. There we go. Mepati, if you ever come down to South Africa, let us know. We would love to meet you one day. We're hosting an annual animation festival here in August. Oh, whoa. Yeah, South Africa is pretty far away for me. Um, but it's it's like a definitely a bucket list place. I feel like it's one of the most unique spaces I can think of. I don't know. I just I just want to travel at some point. I have no interest in traveling right now, and I don't know if it's because I'm still kind of recuperating from the Rona lifestyle. But um, yeah, I think it's also just because I'm so focused on getting my career down. I can't think of like holidays at all. The idea of a holiday is not appealing to me right now, but at some point I would love to head out to South Africa. If you go to switch to writing, can I get your drawing skills? Uh, I'd love to hold on to my drawing skills if that's all right, uh, and I'm sure that you have your own phenomenal drawing skills too, so I don't think you need to worry about that. But I'm, uh, I will let you borrow them. You will have to pay some interest though. Just, uh, you know, I will loan my drawing skills with a 700% interest. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Um, boop, boop. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Whoops. About a label. I should draw a label for this bottle a wine so I will do it I shall succumb to details as always there we go hello what are your pronouns um she her they them is also fine I honestly kind of don't really care just whatever I'm Anya or Mepity if you prefer if you meet me in person, my name is Anya. If you're talking to me online, Anya or Mepity is fine. I don't care, you know, that's that's my solid answers. I'm happy with who I am, as in like just in any form of existence. So whatever you choose to view me as, go for it. Yeah. Um, all right. These guys don't have nails. It feels so weird looking at them without nails. I like drawing nails on fingers, but that's just too much detail that I cannot afford for this project. I feel a little heartbroken, but this is... You gotta make sacrifices, guys, sometimes, you know? I'm gonna get rid of this line. It looks awkward at best. And then I'm gonna thicken this. I think I'm basically done, aside from like him drawing What's it called? Him holding Maya. But I, I'm too lazy to figure that out right this moment. So I'm gonna, let's see. Draw the bottom of this. Like that, nope, like that. That should be fine. And then I'm gonna draw the other top part later, so yeah. Also, I always see you in true crime channel comments. What's your favorite channels? <laughs> That's so true. I really love listening to true crime and just any really long form content because I get very indecisive when it comes to choosing what to watch. So if I can find a three hour video, then I don't have to make that choice for three hours and that's great for me. So um, let's see. I really like Daniel Kirsty, Dreading. 
um, Ellen and Neil. Uh, I used to, um, occasionally I'd watch like Bailey Asarian, but she kind of puts a bit too much goofy humor into otherwise very serious topics, and I don't know if I consider it tasteful. Um, mm, who else? Like Jim Can't Swim and just all those random Jim Can't Swim people. Oh, Explore With Us. Was that e, like e Root, what's up, e Root Crew? That is one of my favorite YouTube channels for sure. Dave's Lemonade, favorite. I have literally two people I support on Patreon. I should support more, but I just kind of keep forgetting to do it. But it's Savannah Marie, who is an anti MLM channel. And to clarify, because last time I talked about this, people are very concerned. When I say MLM, I'm not talking about men loving men. I'm all for that. I'm talking about multi-level marketing, aka the legal version of a pyramid scheme. I love anti-MLM content like that because it's just, I don't know, I don't know. You have to dive into it to get uh, to understand what I'm talking about, but anyway, Dave's Lemonade and Savannah Marie are the two people I am a patron of. Oh wait, no, three, because now I have OKI's okay Weird Stories. I think, oh, it's wrong there. I think his stuff is phenomenal, always so well-researched and so high budget. And it's just like, he needs all the support. I want to support everything he does. So, yeah. Very, like, it's kind of goofy topics often, but it's like really important journalism. So, yeah. Do I watch Illuminati? I briefly did. She always gave me really weird vibes, though. Maybe it's a hot take. I stopped watching and then apparently like some while some while after after I stopped watching, like I kept getting thumbnails of people being like, oh my god, she's been cancelled or oh she's all controversial. And I thought, oh gosh, is this another creep show art situation? Cause she gives me the same vibes as creep show art, but not as intensely. Anyway, um so I don't watch her. I know her stuff was pretty good at the time, but it's, I felt icky watching it, so I guess I stopped. But I do watch, let's see. I have been really in love with Hannah Alonso. She's a really wonderful anti-MLM channel. I think those are the two that I watch these days. I don't watch many others, because some of them are kind of like, they think they're better than everyone else type of vibes, if you get me. Um, I don't know. There's some really great ones out there, but I just haven't watched those anti-MLM channels in a while. No, Illuminati, something fell off about her. Um, and I always trust my gut, so... Whatever that was about, I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> I'm gonna extend this uh, heel so it lines up with the bottom of the foot. I'll do that in a moment on the line art anyway. I'm just blocking in um, Eddie now with just a random solid color just so... Oh! What the heck? Oh crap. Crap, no! My iPad screen just went dark for some reason, and then it auto-selected the rest for me. Oh, this is pain! Okay, well, I can make this work. It's fine. Hang on. Let me do this, and then I'll see if there's any replies about Illuminati. Illuminati? I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. What kind of content do you guys enjoy watching? Like, my sister, I don't know if she does nowadays as much, but she loves all the, like, Minecraft YouTubers and all the one, all the people who got really popular off playing Among Us back in the day, like those types of people, and they seem like a pretty fun bunch. Not my type, but pretty fun. Um, I watch some gaming stuff because that's also long form content. Like I recently watched Jacksepticeye playing the Quarry, random Markiplier videos of him like playing three scary games or whatever. Or prop hunt, I really enjoy those videos. Like any of the tabletop games too. What other types of content do I watch? Just random deep dives into things. Those are always fun. Um, but mostly true crime at the minute. True crime and the H3 podcast. Yeah. 
Uh, I had the same thing. She's apparently quite mean, but it died down. Recently watched some newer stuff out of curiosity and it was okay. Interesting. I don't know. I, I cannot shake the feeling of like being uncomfortable by her content. And so I don't think I'll be making a return because I don't think it's like, I don't think it was her content specifically that was what was made me, that was what made me uncomfortable. I think it's her presence in general. Um, and I feel mean saying it because it's like, I don't have any proof. I don't know any of the drama to do with her being mean or whatever. Oh, Nexpo. Um, oh yeah, all of like, would we'll be like Wendigoon, Nexpo, Disrupt. Um, kind of like sort of horror, ARGE oriented stuff. I think Mama Max got a little too cringy for me kind of recently. Um, but still all that vein, Nightmind, oh, Frederick Nudson, like all those deep dives that Frederick Nudson's done is fascinating. <laughs> so yeah, mostly watch uh, podcasts, I recommend Creative Block, they focus on interviewing people in the animation pipeline, they had Jorge Gutierrez and Alex Hirsch, but also writers and even recruiters. You know, I really want to do a podcast at some point, and in fact, I've been meaning to interview those specific people, um, but I keep... Well, first of all, I want to build up my interviewing skills before I do that. Um, but yeah, I, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. But I, yeah, I need to listen to more like actual educational podcasts. It's mostly been Welcome to Night Vale. Uh, it used to be Ear Biscuits by Rhett and Link. Uh, the Magnus Archives, I binge watched the crap out of that. So Yeah. But I haven't listened to podcasts too recently. I guess I've been wanting something more visual in my life despite not actually watching the screen because I'm drawing. What is it? Time is 2.16, okay. Um, Eddie, do you look okay? Your arm still looks messed up, man. I think it's this. It needs to be like flipped or something. Like. Like that. Maybe? Eh, yeah, it feels sort of better. I don't know. Okay, well. Let's put these guys back on top. And then let me draw Maya. Oh gosh, this is going to be so hard. Dude. Okay. Wait, let's turn all of this even further down. Because boy oh boy, I cannot see what's going on. And then I'm going to make these guys multiply. Cool. Do I just have two random empty layers? Okay, this layer is empty. And then, what about this layer? So it's also empty. Yeah, of course. Of course I did that. I'm gonna go to sleep. Have to check out the Discord tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye! Thank you very much for stopping by. Um, I like super long form content. Yeah, stream VODs, games, art, all of that. Yeah. Um, Mission to ZYXX for fiction podcasts. Ooh, interesting. I need to get back into Welcome to Night Vale. Ooh, and my iPad screen is suddenly bright again. I don't know what is going on with her today. I mean, my iPad has been kind of a problem, but only very mildly so since I got it, where it'll get really hot, where it feels like I'm burning my hand depending on what part of the screen I'm touching, but uh, I've never had any major issues to do with it, so I don't know. But this suddenly turning bright thing is a new one, turning dark and then turning bright. Like as in, it's not fading, I know that's like an automated thing where it tries to adjust to its light and I hate that and you can't turn it off apparently, well at least I can't find where you turn it off. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about um, it just suddenly like dark. 
And in what brush to use for line art? I have said a couple times it is Ink Bleed, which is one of the default brushes in Procreate. I love it very much, and I use it for sketching and for line art. Uh, just when I use it for sketching, I turn the opacity down. Okay, then this. Boop. Okay. That's good enough. Oh, you know who else I like to listen to? Moist Critical from time to time. I will never get over, what is it? One of my friend's tabs revealed to me once. She was like, hey, do you know that, uh, that one SVA animation that for some reason got really popular called Butter Lover? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, do you know who voices both of the characters in it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Charlie is the voice of the characters from Butter Lover. Like that is so weird and I don't know if this is common knowledge but that blew my mind when I found out. Like that's so funny to me. <laughs> so random. Like how did they get him on there? I love that though. Good for you. Okay. All right. Maya is going to be really hard for me to draw because I don't feel confident in her. I was really hoping that she would be the easy one to draw, but somehow she is really not. <laughs> mm. Yeah, my phone does that too, I don't know why, and I go up and check my bright brightness got low, but it'll be all the way up. Yeah, it's really odd. Uh, and total pain when I'm doing things like drawing, where, you know, I'm very sensitive to changes in brightness and so forth. Where it's like actually impacting my productivity in some way. Oh, guys, I'm getting hungry. I ate right before the stream. Well, I guess that was like three hours ago. Eh, makes sense. Maybe I will nap and take the dog for a walk. And then do my job. Uh, is the animation industry worth pursuing anymore? I don't know why it wouldn't be. Is any industry worth pursuing? Is my question. Like, what what would you get out of any industry? Do you want to have your own TV show? Do you just want to afford to live comfortably? Do you want to work from anywhere? Like, what are your goals? That is what's going to determine if it's worth it or not. Because it's worth it to me because I want to tell stories and even if I don't get my own show or I don't work in like a traditional studio or something I'm still working towards something I deeply care about um, if that's not what you want to do if you want to I don't know what I don't know what would eliminate the idea of working for the animation industry because it definitely has its ups and downs but uh, that's something a decision only you can make Charlie was also an extra in Hunger Games, second movie, man is just in a bunch of random places. Yeah, isn't he like super famous for being in uh, in Hunger Games? Like he is basically the star of a show of that film <laughs> that he definitely ended up appearing in, not as like two pixels, maybe, and then like was cut from one scene or something that he ruined. I really like him just showing up in places. I think it's fun. And fun fact, I think Nico, my OC, the puffy jacket guy, if, like, his, what's it called, he definitely would sound pretty similar to Charlie, for sure. Oh, also animated, I do, I, I mean, I haven't for a while, but I do watch Nick DiRamio. Yeah. Seems shows are very short nowadays, no longevity in content. Yeah, that's because, especially with animation, unless it's, like, primetime animated Rick and Morty something or other, it seems like all these streaming platforms just don't care about marketing and then they go and cancel shows because they're like uh, not enough people watched season one sorry it's like well yeah because you didn't tell anyone that the show existed in the first place dumbass i mean i guess they know what they're doing but i don't like it um so yeah that's definitely a thing that's happening but i think that's a symptom of 
wider content as a whole because everything is becoming so niche now that you can find exactly what you like. My roommate, he always talks about how Michael Jackson will forever be the most popular musician to have ever existed. And I get it because he was popular at a time when you couldn't just listen to anything you wanted to on Spotify and you could find a bunch of really underground artists. You like, you had to buy records or like it would be on the radio and that's kind of, there's a very limited number of spaces where you could find new music. And so if you kind of liked something, you like it, you know, like it's, you don't have the luxury of picking a super niche musician. And uh, I think the same thing is happening with, with the online world now and animation where there's so much content out there that fewer people overall are going to be watching the same things because now they can go and wander over to that one little tiny show they like, but that's more expensive to run. And so places like Netflix, cough, cough, uh, love to mess things up for everyone. And then they keep promoting things like Riverdale. Just trash stuff. I don't know. I, uh, I'd really love to see like an animated show that's not adult primetime get properly promoted. Just one, just one show like that from Netflix. Uh, I've, I wouldn't necessarily count Disney Plus because Disney Plus doesn't have... I don't think Disney Plus has any exclusive like 2D animated shows and also they're mostly animation or like Marvel and stuff. So um, HBO Max, I think, has done a semi-decent job of promoting... What's it called? Like animated content. But again, it's still like a certain type of animated content. Uh whatever. I mean, I'm, we're still trying to fight to explain to people that, um, what's it called? The animation is not a genre. We're still like that far behind industry wise that like all those live action snobs think it's just a thing for kids. Dead End Paranormal Park. Like I saw some vague promo about that once and that is all I know about it. Never heard of it beyond that, but I'm assuming it's cool. Do you like Alex Hirsch's inside job? Just curious since you're also a big Gravity Falls fan. Well, it's not his. He was executive producer. Shion Takeuchi is the creator. So credit to her. Um, and she was a writer on Gravity Falls. I, I liked inside job quite a lot. I watched it over Thanksgiving. But, well, two things. One, I ended up... Like, I thought it was good, but it's not something I'm super attached to. Like, if they had another season, I, I'd watch it, but I, got, I don't feel this itching desire to see what's next. And that's fine. I don't think it's supposed to be that. It's, I think, oriented towards being a little more episodic, you know, um, as opposed to one big, long, linear plot. But um, also, it's very pop culture reference heavy, and I don't like films and shows like that. I much prefer timeless storytelling, where it could play, take, you know, the film could have been made in the 80s, or it could be made in 2029, and it doesn't matter because they're not talking about some random celebrities or some random political thing that someone is thinking in that moment. It's like timeless, yeah. Where you make your own inside jokes, where you make your own world building humor. So, like, again, an adventure time to say mathematical. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, these eyebrows are not. They're not doing it for me. I mean, her whole face is still looking really screwed up. Hang on, you know what? I'm gonna get her expression sheet out for reference. Her eyes need to be even further apart, and I think actually smaller, not bigger. I thought they needed to be bigger, but I was wrong. I'm just gonna copy all and just have it shoved in a corner for a second. And she looks too angry almost. Whoop, that's big. Cool. Yeah, her eyes need to be way further apart and smaller. Cool, cool, cool.
like that, something like that. Um, yeah, Netflix ran a program here in South Africa and then randomly pulled most of their funding. So my students who ended up working with Netflix were laid off in a really cool way. Yeah, um, a lot of stuff got um, cancelled everywhere at Netflix. I know a bunch of people who were like, hey, like top level, like as in core team members, as in like the art director, the production supervisor, whatever, being like, hey, looking for work, suddenly. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, not cool not cool at all and it sucks because they put so much money into making a bunch of really original animated content then didn't promote any of it and ran over budget and then that's what they pull so they end up spending a bunch of money on stuff that's never going to see the light of day now uh, but they keep making a bunch of live action stuff and buying a bunch of trash live action stuff too i don't know man um, I think you need to, yeah, um, Alpha 45, I think you need to decide for yourself what you're willing to put up with. The industry does seem to prefer short-term commitments, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, like, that's why I'm very okay with the idea of creating a limited series, a one-and-done, kind of like Over the Garden Wall, like 10 episode thing, because that, you know, you can't mess that up in the sense of, if you had a second season where you wanted to expand the story and suddenly you get scrap, it gets scrapped, then and you're like suddenly missing half your story. It's like no, you're asking from the beginning for an allotted time, and if that's what they give you, then you have more scope to tell the full story you want to tell. Um, yeah, it seems like pandering isn't a way to make money. Look at uh, Lightyear compared to Minions. People don't support propaganda. Do you have any favorite animated shorts? I've recently finding more of my suggested. Um, I haven't really watched many animated shorts. If any, they're going to be like Cal Arts or Goblin's films. But beyond that, I haven't watched much, to be honest. Not recently, I mean. Um, I do have a list somewhere, but I'll have to find it and retrieve it and probably put it on my Patreon and share a couple of the things out publicly. The studio I work at lost a contract just when animation was about to start on a Netflix show. A lot of good friends lost their jobs. Yeah, it really does. Just, oh, It just sucks, man. Uh, our students who got laid off were told, next month a few of you are getting fired. We won't say who though. So they had to work for a month not knowing who was out. Oh, that is awful. That's like top tier, terrible. Gosh. I don't know, man. Look, big old companies don't seem to enjoy doing that very much. Well, I mean, I, as I mentioned the other day, I was potentially going to have a job at Netflix on a dream, dream show. Like, literally a dream show. And that never happened, and it was like a couple reasons. And then they were like, oh, but actually you're still in the running. And that's the last I heard. But then I heard more information from another source being like, oh yeah, no, that show isn't happening anymore. So it looks like no one got the job I could have gotten. <laughs> How has working from home changed your career? I think long term it's like decent. I can work from anywhere and I feel like I can be any, like as in I can be anywhere in the world and still further my career. But for someone who is just starting out in the industry, it has sucked. I have multiple colleagues that I have, you know, like at various studios and I haven't met a single one of them. Like the most I have spoken to any of them is like half hour meetings on Zoom or Google Hangouts. And it's like, or Google Meet, I mean. Like, that's not getting to know someone, and I'm not expecting to be friends with my colleagues, that's not what I mean, but it's just, I wanna build a connection with the industry and the people in it, and actually feel like I'm a part of something. Because right now, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like, a, like it's all fake, almost. But yeah. Um, no, I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna try the skirt again. I say again, I haven't tried it yet at all. What am I on about? Mm -hmm. Oh no. <sighs> do you guys still use Snapchat? Because I do. I love Snapchat. And I think it's slowly dying, which is making me sad because everyone seems to be focusing on Instagram and I cannot stand Instagram. Uh, but 
I like it and also it seems that mostly my UK friends still use it so it's like a nice little separation between my peer like my groups of peers but I cannot cope there's some people some guys out there are so weird where they will like add me and then unadd me after like uh you know just like randomly and then hit me up and I'm like well, weird and flirty and stuff and it's uh, and then they like unadd me if I don't respond in time or something as if they're trying to play some game with me or they're embarrassed I don't know I'm embarrassed for them it's just so cringeworthy but anyway uh I love Snapchat, but I do not love those interactions. I just got one just now. Like someone who has periodically been uh, following me and then uh, well, adding me and then unadding me for like two years at this point just decided to add me again. And I would like, and I haven't blocked them. Cause I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of entertaining, but I don't want to deal with that. Like. Like, the way that they keep thinking about me and actively, like, adding me over the course of two years. I am very uncomfy. Anyway, that's some personal gripes. Is paying for Instagram promotion for your art a good way to grow a following? I have no idea. I don't, I haven't used it enough to, uh, not in its modern day and age. I think I promoted a post once out of curiosity and it really didn't add much. So unless you're willing to spend like hun literally hundreds of bucks or even thousands, then oh, then again, this was over two years ago. This is like maybe three years ago at this point, like right when they introduced it. I don't know if that was necessarily a good solution. Also, okay, my, my laptop is charging, but it says it's losing battery. Hmm, so strange. You're in a bunch of group chats and Snapchat and they check every couple of weeks. I have i don't think I've used a, uh, what's it called? I've rarely used group chats and Snapchat. For that I use WhatsApp, because that's like what Europeans tend to use. Or just like text. Snapchat is like one-on-one -on -one communication. I enjoy that very much. It's just like very quick and efficient. And sure, it's also been bombarded with a bunch of like trash content, but it's kind of swept off to the side, so you don't have to ever interact with it if you don't feel like it. You've never had Snapchat, you prefer Instagram? Yeah, no, I can never do Instagram. I will post there occasionally, maybe for the sake of trying to promote myself, <laughs> but... Okay, those eyes are not good. But, um... What was I saying? I was getting like serious anxiety from Instagram and I never got that from Snapchat because also Snapchat is like not personal. No, sorry, it is personal. It's not art related for me. So I can just post what I want, share it to just my friends, not be concerned about like just, I don't know social repercussions which sounds like i'm saying i'm like i'm posting some really controversial content i am not and that's the problem is like twitter and instagram both seem to be places where someone is out to get you no matter what you do you, you know you lose either way um like you know i could be like hope everyone's having a nice day and then there's gonna be somebody out there dming me being like you know some people uh, suffer and they just can't have nice days and you're being inconsiderate and it's like what am I supposed to do say oh I hope only the people who are capable of having nice days have nice days or just not be kind at all like I don't know some people are a little redonkulous online if you ask me do you use whatsapp I do use whatsapp but again only like personally I'm not communicating with People I don't know personally on WhatsApp. I've used the Instagram promotion feature in the past just for some testing and it gets a lot of general exposure, a lot of likes, but maybe 5% of those become followers. Mm, interesting. Hi, just joined the stream. Hi, Rebecca. Sorry if you already answered this, but do you ever feel lonely working from home and not seeing friends co-workers much? How do you deal with the feeling lonely as an artist? It's funny. I mean, I don't know when you joined the stream. If you literally just joined it, wow, that's kind of wild timing because I was just talking about that maybe five minutes ago. 
but yes i do feel pretty lonely i'm very fortunate to be based in like you know the capital of animation so i have my resource of friends close to me but when it comes to work i have still not met a single one of my colleagues ever from any of my jobs and that sucks i feel like i'm not even in the industry at all like it it feels like a like like it's fake like i'm making it up in my head and i'm lying to people that have worked for netflix or whatever like <laughs> that's that's annoying um but uh and also i'm just generally a very social person but i know i have it better than others in terms of like what's available to me okay why is this like not looking good i'm trying to see if the nose is too long or not long enough you know if it ends up being a bit wonky i kind of don't really care too much not for this sketch anyway. Mm. I'm gonna redo them out. That's definitely messed up, but yeah. Oops. I swear it doesn't normally take me like four hours to do just a basic sketch. Cause if that's the case, then I'm not gonna be able to finish this film ever. It'll take me like 10 years, but um, hopefully once I warm up, I can get used to this stuff and all of that. Wait, so are all studios still remote? I think almost all, yeah. Um, but at least you don't have to, be yeah, someone saying, at least you don't have to pay ridiculous gas prices to get to work or sit in traffic for multiple hours a day. So, yeah. Um, it seems the Instagram algorithm likes consistency the most. There's a way to automate posts. You set them up once a month and it'll post for you. That seems to work well. Huh. Yeah, the consistency part is what killed it for me. Uh, I couldn't do it. I can't post that level of consistency. Not to a quality that I'm happy with. And so I think it's a bit of a me problem and a bit of an algorithmic problem. But yeah, it was the second that the algorithm kind of switched itself up to focus on that was when I started getting extremely distressed by opening Instagram and it's funny since quitting now anytime I do open the app I cannot be on there for ma more than five minutes and if I'm on there those full five minutes and me making a post I cannot scroll like I feel intense like panic kicking in and you know what I'd rather have that feeling than be addicted to Instagram again because I used to be and that was just a waste of many hours of my life of me just feeling sorry for myself for getting irrationally angry about things that don't really matter or like things that shouldn't be impacting me as much as they do when it's like it's not productive to feel that way kind of deal um just noticed that my sleeve thing is way too long needs to be here that's better i you want a hiatus right now in terms of instagram yes it's like indefinite i don't think i'll ever return to it properly but i will post occasionally why did you make the eyes smaller and close to the upper part of the forehead and maybe a little more far apart i think i will move that one eye further away um, but i don't think it should be closer to the upper part of the forehead because she's looking down um, and so there's going to be more forehead space now. Well, I guess there's a decent chunk here. And then I think this one I didn't do very well. This one has too much space in the forehead. Um, but I will move the eyes further apart. I think also I made the head too tall. So I will fix that. I think that might solve some issues. And turn that down. Gonna move this up ever so slightly. And then tweak that. Okay, now this might fix some things. Again, if this doesn't look perfect, it's whatever. This is a test. 
is not going to be in my final film. Hopefully, anyway. It would be nice if it was perfect, but hmm. Do you do boards or design for your day job? Uh, design. Um, although I was contracted as an animator when I did work for Netflix, even though I did backgrounds. I did, uh, what is it? Yeah, I did backgrounds, animation, compositing. So, yeah. Got to go, but really cool stream. Thank you so much for tuning in, Space Paprika. Always good seeing you around. I always love seeing your stuff on Discord. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are, whatever it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks a lot better now. Definitely, I agree. Thank you very much for the suggestion. I do need to flatten this part of the face out though, because the face is so flat. There you go. Ah, yeah, now she's a lot more expressive looking too. Ah, it's so nice fixing issues. All right. Does anyone here ever just animate something dumb for your own amusement? My favorite thing to draw and animate is flappy old ladies. Always gives me a giggle. <laughs> I don't think I've had time like that for a while, um, but in theory, yes. <laughs> I live in Long Beach, so Burbank isn't far, but I feel like the class gap regarding relocating close to potential animation work sounds scary. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long it'll be before I'll be able to afford to live in Burbank. But then it's like, if you don't live there and you have to work at a studio, you have to commute. And that is also really expensive. So, yeah, it's a uh, lose-lose, it looks like. Mm, I love adulthood and jobs. <laughs> uh, okay, this expression is definitely coming to life more. It seems like you guys in the chat agree, so that's nice. I'm gonna make a quick tweak because right now it looks the angle of her the way she's sitting looks like it's wrong but it's not it's just so her hip needs to come in here more so that looks a little bit better I guess I'll <sighs> but now it's gonna tangent with where Eddie is You know, it looks like she has too much of a hip, but she's not got, like, she hasn't got big hips. She's like a skinny little white girl. God damn it, why is it so hard? Ugh, whatever this will do. Can you save the video channels, please? Uh, I don't know what, what, wait, what? Can you save the video channels? I feel really silly. Wait, what? What, what? what? Sorry. Do you mind if you elaborate? I'm not. If you if you're asking me if I'm gonna delete these streams, I'm not gonna delete them. I'm gonna keep them here. So don't worry about that. Um, sometimes I like to animate a lady throwing pigeons at people. Fun. <laughs> You've been very responsive to the chat, which is nice to hang out. But since humans can't multitask, I might mean you're much slower at drawing than normal. Yeah, I'm definitely embracing the fact that I'm slower when I stream than when I'm work like when I'm just alone. Especially when I'm like tired and trying to multitask. So I'm gonna try and not be too harsh on myself, but all the same. Like I don't wanna just focus on drawing. I want to be engaging with you guys, but I also feel like I you know, you're here to see results, right? Actually, you know what? No. I am gonna make a poll. I'm not going to ask too many questions about it until I make it. Uh, wait, hang on, I'm like, why? Okay, man, I wish 
I wish I had a, what's it called? Five options. Also, yes, I type with one hand, which is very slow and frustrating, but that's how I learned. Didn't mean to do that. I don't know when I learned how to type, but I learned, <laughs> I learned incorrectly apparently. Um, and also my keyboard is a total mess. I think I said the other day, my I's, O's, H's, and now it looks like some other letters occasionally. Um, when I type, just even like the tiniest tap, they will type themselves out two to three times. So my H's are the most egregious, where sometimes they'll even type an H when I'm not actually pressing the button, it'll like appear a beat after I had already pressed it. So when I type the word what, um, all of the above is not an option, which is why I wanted to do, what's it called? Um, why I wanted five. But if you had to pick one, that's what I'm most curious about. Like, which is your priority, you know? Anyway. Uh, this is what my uh, what's have been looking like recently if I don't edit them in chat. Sorry, you're probably, re you're probably re receiving the chat before you're receiving me talking about it, so yeah. Anyway, all of the above, kind of both, option two and three. I'm not from California, but I do live in California. Um, Treating this as a draw along, remembering to not be tethered to my phone and to draw pretty pictures instead. Nice. Let's see, what are the results looking like? So, what, so most of you are here to watch the process. That's good. Some of you are interested in the finished product. I'm, well, to those of you, I'm very sorry that it's going to take so long. <laughs> but um, we will get there eventually. General chatting and learning, that's nice as well. So, yeah, again, I want to be offering something that can only really be done live. As in, you know, uh, this direct interaction with me. Um, you can watch speed paints. I, I can technically stream this just straight up and not talk. I could, um, I could like cut it down to be a simplified video, which is what I will do eventually. Not with each stream, but with the whole film broadly. Um, but when I'm streaming, general chatting and learning seems to be, uh, what's it called? Seems to be the way to go, I think, for now anyways. Okay, one ankle is thinner than the other. Which one do I fix? Okay, that, okay, this ankle is too thin. She's got kind of chunkier legs. Well, it's still very thin, but in comparison. Okay, how do her shoes look? This is the thing, it's been so long since I've drawn her that I literally don't remember how she looks. Whoops. But that's why I'm also hoping that when I'm not streaming and when I'm animating, I'll have gotten used to these characters enough that I don't need to like worry about every tiny line being accurate or not, and that I just have that naturally built in by that point. Okay, you're gonna blacken her inside of the skirt. Skirt, skirt. I'm debating what I should do, so I can't stream tomorrow because I have a full day of work, but like, <laughs> could you imagine if I streamed and then my my work is like, hey Anya, so we're paying you right now to, to work for us, why are you streaming on YouTube? Because I think they know that I stream on YouTube, or that I post to YouTube anyway. Um, so that would be really funny. Well, not funny. That would be bad. Like, I don't think they would ever rehire me. So, yes, I'm definitely not working tomorrow. I mean, sorry, I'm definitely not streaming tomorrow, but Saturday, I do hope to. Unless, wait, I think I have other plans for part of the time. It's all good. Okay. It's all good, man. Ha 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 ha. Good show. Isn't the the second half of the final season of uh, Better Call Saul Better Call Saul like out or coming out like right? Was it today? Oh wait, it's my roommate's birthday. That's right. I need to text him. I'll do that after this uh, stream is over too. My brain is all over the place. Sometimes I really do wonder if I have ADHD because uh, you know. 
Lots of the symptoms make an appearance, but then again, I feel like it seems to be very trendy to have it right now, and that everyone's like falsely, what's it called, diagnosing themselves with it. I have a friend who like, came up to me being like, no, I actually like, have it. Uh, yeah, I haven't been told by a doctor, but I have it. It's like, I have suspicions that I might have it, but a doctor hasn't told me, therefore I am not saying that I have it. Anyway, um, just a little piece on self-diagnosing uh i'm gonna end the poll so it looks like most of you are here to what learn the, to watch the process but also are happy with the general chatting 60 votes that's some so seeing as we have 84 viewers and 60 of you voted that is some really high engagement in this stream today that's really great. I, don't, I wonder how it would have been if I had run the poll when I was at my cap. I don't know when that would have been, but that's really cool to see you guys are engaged. Thank you. That sounded like I was being fake. I mean it. Seriously, thank you. <laughs> mm, her feet are not that long. They're like this long. Like this. Nope. This long. Okay, and then No, that still doesn't look right uh, angle wise. I think I might need to Make this a curve down here to imply her ankles are turned out they essentially turn the opposite way to Eddie, which I think is kind of cute. And they're like, you know, opposites attract or whatever. Which also means they need to tweak this. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I don't even know what I'm singing. I'm assuming it's like a TikTok sound. And now my stomach is making funny noises. I really love that for me. Also, yes, I am completely ignoring the underdrawing of this because I'm changing things to better suit the vibe. Those lines are not straight. Crap. That I like how I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make this drawing perfect, and then I'm like fussing over the teeniest, tiniest, like something being three pixels off. I need to know how to manage that better. How do you tackle big, complex illustrations? By not doing them. <laughs> that's honestly the truth, but that's not a good answer, and I'm very aware. But it's why I haven't done any big illustrations for a while, it's just I don't have the patience for them. Um, but in terms of uh, actual suggestions, I suggest blocking in very basic things. So like a collection of people here, a collection of people here, big scene here, some like something like that, you know, and then so you start with the biggest, broadest shapes and color or not colors, biggest, broadest shapes and values. So also black and white, uh, you know, but essentially you're structuring where the eye is focusing, what is focusing on first, second and third, like what is standing out the most kind of deal. Then you break down into some more and more detail until you're actually in the nitty gritty. Yeah. Um, my impression is that you seem to have ADHD. I think ADHD is such a different operating system than neurotypical people. So it's handy for creativity or science, so neurodiverse. Maybe, maybe. Um, I guess I should get it checked out, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm kind of nervous about it because I think it's, like I said, it's trendy and I think there's going to be that misconception of like oh you're just doing it because you think because the internet told you to or oh because you think it's cool to have it now or something which is like i don't wish anyone to have any like difficulties in any form you know i don't think it's cool to like the way that there's all these teenagers on tiktok have claiming to have did all of a sudden it's like, or like to have fake ticks or Tourette's, like, 
people are doing it because they think it's cool, but it's like, no, people who actually have these conditions are suffering intensely many times, often times, and it's like very dismissive and disrespectful to those people who actually have those conditions, you know? So I also don't want to be here like, mm, yeah, I think I have this thing because like, I uh, get distracted sometimes. You know, I don't want to, and like, I don't know, I feel like people have it worse than me, and so I feel like if I go out ahead and try and get some, uh, what's it called? Someone to look into it for me, like if I speak to a doctor or whatever, that I'm taking away from uh, someone else who needs it more than me. Which I don't think is necessarily how my thinking should be, but it is. Eh. I'm not going to include knee details, actually, because that's going to be too much to animate. Oof, those cringing ages. And also, you know what, no hate to the kids who do that. Like, I think it's ridiculous, and I think they need a good slap on the wrist and being told what's what. But, um, you know, but we're all, we were all there. I know I was certainly a cringy 13-year-old. Not to that extreme, but I certainly was. And that's where the name Epti came from. So, yeah. Leaving the stream for the day. Thanks for hanging out with us, Anya. See you next stream or on Discord. See ya, Sammy. Thank you so much for, st for stopping by. Um... Mefti, any advice for bad habit animating straight ahead? I've been animating for years and I use reference but I tend to go straight ahead and I feel like an imposter and I can't seem to stop. I'm afraid I don't have advice for you because I do exactly the same thing. It's why I'm so, um, so prone to animating really fluidly on twos. And it's not because I want beautiful animation that looks super smooth, it's because I'm addicted to doing it and I can't help but not, I, I, I can't not do it for some reason. Uh, I don't know. It's like this weird addiction to wanting to see the finished product, kind of. Like, to see it feel as flowy as possible. So I'm afraid I don't have advice. If someone does have advice out there, though, I would love to hear it, and I'm sure Animated would also love to hear it. And I'm so sorry if you can hear my stomach. Maybe I should stand by the mic and you can hear it. But also, that's kind of gross. Wait, let's see if I can make it make a noise again. Oh yeah, and of course now it stops. Classic. Never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna stop getting distracted, maybe. Let's see if I can focus for like five minutes. <sighs> okay, okay. Um, now I need to draw Maya's hand, and I see it's floating because I ended up moving where Eddie was since drawing her. Um, so I'm gonna adjust what her hand is doing. Maybe like something like that what's up stinko oh that is a yawn hi hello pepperoni we got the popsicle here let's see if you can see him let's get the chair out of the way say hi ray oh good stretch we haven't, we haven't got walking time until 4 p.m so we've got one more hour Right? Yeah, we've got 57 minutes until we all head out. So, we'll do that later. And I want to make some food for myself before we do that. So, I'm going to finish this drawing, okay? And then, we'll walk. Yeah? But for now, you're going to have to hold on a little longer. Sorry, Stinko. But we'll go to that new park. I promised we would go and we're going to do it. Yep. Anyway, sorry. Mind, don't mind me having a chat with, with Stinky. I call all dogs stinky and all cats smelly. I don't know where that came from, but that is just the rule. That is exactly what it has to be, so yeah. Uh, Parker says, if you have symptoms that are affecting your day-to-day -day life negatively and you see a doc about it, it's okay because you all know that you're not faking doing it because it's trendy. The tricky part with that is, is like, I don't know how much it's affecting my day because this is all I've ever known. You know, like this level of being able to focus and so forth. Also, okay, sorry, I drew this hand in pen, just straight up in one go. And it looks, it's like one of the best hands I've ever drawn. Why did that just happen? Like that's so, that, that's great. Good for me. Anyway. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Um, I think it might be a bit too big though. Let me shrink it down a teensy bit. I don't remember what I was talking about. Never mind, can't have been too important. Um, all right, I'm gonna fill in Maya. 
And then we're finally gonna be able to add that dreaded eddy arm that's been <laughs> pestering me this whole time. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna make Maya this weird pink color for now. Actually, it's too skin toned. I wanna do like silly colors. Let's make a periwinkle. Because that seems to be the color I've assigned her anyway. I'm gonna merge these layers. And then I'm going to color her in. Oh, I really hope this looks good. I really do because otherwise I've spent so much of my life working on this drawing and it's pain. Uh, okay. Thank you for the celebrations and the good hand, guys. Thank you. Um, I just remembered someone like maybe an hour ago asked if I was if I'm interested in voice acting or if I voice acted in other CalArts films and I totally forgot to respond to it. I did read it though. I have not voiced any official CalArts films. I have voiced characters in my own films. I have voiced like random interstitial or like background characters in things like 48 hour films. You know the the, the sort of almost like game jam style projects people have done but I have not been a voice in in any official capacity. I auditioned for one um, and I was, I mean, I was kind of disappointed I didn't get it. I wasn't expecting to get it, so don't get me wrong, but it was a really fun film that I think has like several million views on YouTube now. If you see, um, it's like uh, Lady Alice, Lady Alice, is that right? No, it's like, it's like the cat detective, I can't remember what it's called, but it's really great. It's like in animatic form. I don't know if it's gonna ever be finished, but that is such a badass film. And they were like, oh, we need, oh, I just realized I forgot to finish this here. Okay, well, whatever. Um, we need a British accent to be like a sexy cat lady. And I was like, oh my gosh, I would love to voice act as a sexy cat lady, uh, but I didn't get the part and I'm a bit salty. I have no right to be salty, but I am a little bit salty. Um, but power to the people that did get it. Oh, okay, yep, there goes my screen being dark again. I don't know how you guys are managing to follow, al uh, follow along with just, I feel like my streams this over the last four or five days have become progressively more chaotic and disorganized. Um, wait, we were talking about voice acting, that's right. Oh yeah, so I really want to get into more voice acting. So this time around, next year, as soon as the posters come up at school, um, I would love to actually do more auditions. And also, I would love to voice act for other people's projects. I do wanna like build a repertoire a little, you know, I wanna practice and things. I don't think I'm good at accents per se. I don't think I'm even that great at voices, but I'd love to practice having a range that isn't just a little kid's voice. Um, and like a posh, a posh individual lady who says this, that, and to the other. And like, I want to do more than that, but if you guys ever want me to voice act for you, let me know and I can give it a try, because that would be fun. And I like collaborating like that. Uh, oh yes, I should probably remove her leg gap. Uh, oh, there goes my, my stomach again. I mean, I thought I had ADHD for a while after graduating from art school, but it turned out I was only lost and burned out at the time. Yeah, see, it's like, it could be that. I mean, I've always felt this way kind of my whole life of desperately wanting to be productive and being totally unable for big chunks of time. And then suddenly I'm like freakishly productive for a week of my life and then I crash and burn again, but I can never choose what I'm productive with, never. I will plan something um, like, you know, I'll plan for my week and then I'll maybe do 20% of that stuff. And then I either have done nothing else or I have started and finished a whole new project that was completely unplanned, unexpected, uh, but wasn't on the list. <laughs> yeah. No in between it seems, which is frustrating. Um, cause I can't afford to do that in the industry, you know, can you do cranky old lady? Um, can I do a cranky old lady? What should I say? So give me, like type something in the chat for me to say as a cranky old lady and then I can give you one. How about that? We can try. And in the meantime, in the meantime, I need to suffer through these goddamn 
drawings of Eddie's uh, what's it called? His hand, his arm. Oh, and his not arm isn't even in the right place. And now I need the bathroom. That's great. Uh, yeah. Okay, it was this drawing. Gonna duplicate that. Send that on up over here. Make it a multiply layer. Hmm. Cheek or hair. I think cheek. Um. Oh, would you ever host an animation jam? I think something like an animation jam in my server would be great. I'd need to make sure that I have enough active mods and that I'm active enough, but someday for sure. Um, let's see. Have you read ADHD Alien? It's a very good webcomic by an artist with ADHD. No, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Don't touch my vodka. Don't touch my vodka. Yes. Why are you on my yard? Okay, let me think. I'm gonna embarrass myself when I try and do an old lady voice. I'm, I need to like, I, I need to go all in or not. And now I'm like panicking for some reason. I'm trying to think like, okay. If I walk away to the other side of the room, why are you in my why are you in my yard? It's a little short. Maybe you know what? Hang on. I'm gonna get some. Uh, what's it called? I'm gonna get a line from my film. My sister just messaged me. I wonder if she's watching the stream or if she just is messaging me by chance. Um, Dash Baroni, if you're in here, say hi. <laughs> um, hmm. Old lady vibes time. Why am I so nervous? Also, I forgot what I was going to say about it. Oh, I was going to take something from my uh, from my own script. Well, let me find my script. Let's do that first. Go to nepity.com. I like how I can just type in M and that's the first thing that shows up for me now because I typed my own website in that many times. Uh, is that self-absorbed? Maybe. But to be fair, I'm usually viewing it to send someone something or to edit it. I'm not just like staring at my own website or I'm using it as like a, an extra reference window. All right, old lady, come give me some decent lines so that I can be an old woman. That doesn't sound like an idiot like I currently do. Hmm. Hmm. That's a bit late. Let's see, let's scroll back. I'm sorry, this is not what you guys tuned in for. <laughs> oh, what? All of the lines are so short. Well, you know what? I'm gonna read... How about this? I read the description of the apartment they live in in an old lady voice. That's what I'm gonna do. All right. Interior. Dated kitchen apartment. Afternoon. Oh, wait, this is meant to be cranky. Um... Oh, screw it, whatever. I'm just gonna do a vague attempt at old lady and if it ends up being cranky, then great. If it doesn't, then I'm sorry. Uh, peeling green walls, wooden cabinets, a small window at the end of the room with plants on the sill and lace trimming on top. Knickknacks and plants cover most surfaces. A kettle boils on the stove. Beige tile floor. I did change that. It's no, now a parquet floor. A small round table with lace doily and two basic wooden chairs. An old box TV sits on the end of the countertop. It faces the table. The TV broadcasts a gardening show. Dude, that was like terrible. I need to, I, that is, that was really bad. That was just straight up awful, so I'm very sorry. There was no personality in that, but I did it. <laughs> I'll try harder another time. Um, let's see. My dad's asking what, what I'm doing. He's like, the girls have been quiet in our chat, so I'm gonna tell him I'm live streaming. But I thought he has notifications on for me. Anyway. <laughs> Leave me be, I'm sewing. Sure thing. <laughs> um, all right. My grandma would say, don't touch my vodka. Anyway. 
Uh, I like grandma's telling a story. It's like hearing a bored old lady narrating everything she sees. Yeah, I mean, I'm reading a set description, which is literally narrating everything you see. Hang on, let me just see. Um, currently streaming. Currently streaming. <laughs> if you want to see me live. Where's... Okay, there we go. Cool. If my dad swings by, I'll tell him about my day and I'll tell all of you as well. That's a lie. I should probably keep some information private. Anyway. <laughs> um, crap on a stick. How am I gonna do Eddie's hand? <laughs> I've been procrastinating so much. <laughs> this is so painful. Okay. Oh wait, no one is my dad said. Going to bed now, Pud is bugging me to be fed again. Oh yeah, we have a cat called Pud, or Pudding, or Pud E Tat, or Pudnik. She's, she's all kinds of Puds. I think her official name is Pud E Tat. Yeah, but um, I miss her. She's up in the UK. She's in the UK with my dad, and I am not in the UK. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But anyway, my dad said he's going to bed, so. Papa from the future, if you happen to tune in. Hello, hello. Papa, if you don't end up tuning in, well, I guess you won't see this message either way, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you know what, let's have that be a more dramatic angle. Like that. Nah, that'll work. And then I kind of want to have the swirly thing. What's it called? Not the, the swirly thing? Guys, I have zero vocab in my brain this week. Or just ever, really, to be honest. But uh, today I am especially struggling. I'm trying to... Let's see. He has like these squiggles on the sides and I think they're good to indicate angle an angles angles um, but I don't think it's useful to have here never mind because it's would be more further back than anything maybe on this side yeah that works there you go cool all right back to this arm Let's see if I can make him look like he's gently caressing her cheek and not manhandling her this time. Da, 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 da. Maybe something like that. Maybe like this. I know you can't really see it, so don't worry. Um, we'll attend to that. We'll tend to that in a moment. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's good enough. That's fine. I will fix, I can see there's some issues on the, like I saw in the thumbnail of the layers. So I will tend to those once I am blocked in here so that I know exactly what I'm working with. I know it could turn down the opacity of all the other layers, but I'm too lazy. Hee ha ha hoo ha. Okay, so what the errors that I see are Oops. Um, this here is meant to be like one finger, but because I ended up changing the angle of the fingers, it kind of cut it off from itself, and so it looks like it's no longer connected. And it is also just like kind of too thick. So I think it should be more like here. And then. Wait, no, like this. But that's also like weird because there's meant to be, you know, a whole other 
segment in typical hands, right? But I kind of want to keep it that graphic look, so... Um, yeah. Is the index finger too long, maybe? I think you're actually not- yeah, you know what, I need to zoom out. It's all wrong, all of it is wrong. LOL, this is what happens when I don't know how to draw hands and I pretend I do. Fine, fine, I'm gonna turn down the opacity on the rest of the line art. Because it doesn't look good. The sleeve looks fine, I think. I think it's just the actual hand. Well, I guess I'm gonna cut this off too. Like that. Cool. Hello time. Um, I kind of like the idea of actually maybe the hand coming up and like, <laughs> not like that obviously, but um, what's it called? Kind of like coming up and sort of holding her hair in between the fingers, but I don't know. I think I've placed the arm too low to do that right now. So let me try one more version of, um, yeah, saying gently stroking the hair and, okay, you know what, let's just try it. Screw it. Oh. I want to make sure this little area here doesn't get too messy, but it might. So I think I will maybe tuck it in like this. And I, I see this like rogue piece of elbow now, so I will change it. Um, the storytelling here is interesting. Is your character trying to be with a bad boy? If you want to know, you should read the script. I mean, they are together, but she's got other things on her mind which are keeping her distracted and unhappy. And he's... He's just trying to live life and be, you know, he's very considerate, considerate of her. And one of his techniques of trying to make her feel better is to just be having a good time and encourage her to do the same. Like, you know, to distract her. And that is kind of what he's doing now with the power of alcohol, <laughs> which is not uh, advice that I would personally recommend. I would not recommend drowning your sorrows in, in, that I think there's healthier ways of handling emotional torment, but I'm not your mother, so do what you want. So there's a weird noise behind me. I like the hand, all a part of the process. <sighs> yeah, I know it's all a part of the process, but I still feel terribly annoyed by it. I also feel like it would look better if you had four fingers, right? But because the, these characters don't, he looks kind of, it looks a little awkward. Mm, his hand is like so short, I think, right? Like, these are not a good reference. Like, here, yeah, see his palm area is so short in comparison to his uh, actual fingers, so... I think this is about right palm wise. I'm trying to draw it in a way that it doesn't feel like I'm only drawing two segments, but that it kind of, um, what's it called? Oh man, I can't think and draw at the same time. Not at this stage of my tiredness. This just doesn't look kind or caring still. Um, pillow time again it is, it should I want someone to be here with me so that I can test it on someone's head Ray, do you want to pretend to be a human? I don't think that would work I don't think it would be efficient 
Yeah, I want to keep it like a solid silhouette, but it still just doesn't feel right ankle wise. Ankle? Angle wise. Oh yeah, good reminder to flip the canvas, thank you. I have not. So you need people around you to remember to save your files and to flip the canvas. I always forget to save files because it does it automatically inappropriate, so yeah. Well, you know what? I think I've been working too much sideways. I think angle-wise, it actually needs to be kind of directly away from the camera a little more. Like this. Well, not like this, it looks bad, but that, in that vein. I really struggle with hands, apparently. Sometimes I'll pull off like a decent hand like this, and then other times I have hands like this. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> It just looks so chaotically bad. <laughs> I'm okay with it though. I've embraced it. I'm gonna switch it up to be here. Um, I'm gonna make some changes to the base drawing to fix it. One of the changes being narrowing this and the other change is to change this because this is impacting kind of the angle. So as you can see here, it's like sort of the front half of his wrist from the side is um, kind of where the sleeve line is. So it should be kind of further up like this, I believe, I think. I don't know, I don't know. I can't believe there's 88 of you watching me. I'm very thankful. I feel like I would be bored of me though. I would be bored of me suffering through whatever the crap this drawing is becoming. On the plus side though, I definitely think that this drawing is looking a lot better than it did, um, what's it called? It's looking a lot better than it did when I first sketched it. I just got some a message from Genie Bean on Discord, who very kindly is offering a um, what's it called? Very kindly offering a, a solution for the drawing. Let's see. There's nothing incriminating my phone. Not incriminating. There's no like. There you go. So that's what I'm being recommended. So I'm going to keep that in mind. And don't worry about overstepping. I appreciate the input. I'm asking you guys questions and. Sure, I'm technically supposed to be the professional one here, but we're all artists, we all struggle, and we all have some valuable input to give, and this is very valuable. So, I don't know who Jeannie Bean is in relation to um, who you are in the chat, but thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm going to use this as reference. So, thank you. It's like... Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm struggling so much today, so I'm going to shorten the uh, paddle part of the hand, like the palm, just because of that, that being like the design. It's just, like, I normally, I can functionally do, what's it called? Oh, thank you, Animated. Thank you, thank you, Genie <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but, uh, what is it? Yeah, normally I'm okay with foreshortening, but I think this is this art style that I'm working in for this film is still very new to me, and you can probably tell, you know. I guess I can make I I, I need to make it bigger, I know, but I guess I can like kind of move her hair in the way so it'll feel less awkward. Maybe like that, and then shrink the paddle part of the hand again. Okay. And luckily, this structurally has not made him put his finger in an ear hole. Like, yeah. He might look more caring if he puts his hand on her shoulder. Trust me, we've tried a bunch of different ways, and I've just been struggling with all of them. But I am going to do this pose multiple times, maybe not on stream. Um, I might try some other things instead. Um, whoops. Like other similar poses, but not quite the same. 
Um, and because there's like multiple moments in the film where they're kind of caring for each other. So yeah. Also, yes, it is very challenging to work in front of an audience. That is definitely part of the struggle here. Is these are like private things I would have for myself where I'd be silent. I would be staring at my own hand. I would go up to a mirror. I'd probably take some photos on my phone of my me holding my own hair and stuff. Uh, so yeah, my process is a little bit adjusted because I'm doing this live in front of people. Um, but yeah, it's okay. You guys, this, I mean, I mean I'm going to hopefully be reassured by the fact that if you guys feel like I am somehow some high level artist, like look at me struggling here and needing your guys help. We are all learning and struggling together. <laughs> I'm gonna maybe do that or something. I'm gonna have to zoom out and see if this looks at all passable. It might not be, but for now. Mm. Yeah, a tiny bathroom. I do too, but I haven't got it here with me because I'm currently not at my own apartment. So I feel almost naked without it. It's so useful to have and I didn't bring it. I mean, I didn't really feel like flying with a mirror in my suitcase. So whoopsies. Um, okay, I can see some changes I need to make, don't worry. Like the pad of the wrist needs to stick out more, like this. The pad of the wrist? What does that even mean? What did I just, what did I just say? Quick question, I have my files come through okay? Yes, they have, but I've been very busy, so I won't be able to look at them until maybe sometime this weekend, Attila, because I have, uh, what's it called? Um, a job now on Friday and later today that came through this morning so yeah but I will get to it as soon as I can I did see your payment so don't worry yeah you guys I do still offer audio critiques in various forms so if that is something that interests you uh, drop me an email and I can send you further instructions I may be slow in my response though these days just because um, I have quite a lot on my plate but I'm sure you can understand and if, if you tell me about a hard deadline you know I can I'll do my best to work towards it. Okay oh wait I was just trying to erase something but it was not it was like not even on my iPad it was physically on top of my iPad. <laughs> okay um like this <sighs> maybe this is it maybe i'm finally gonna be done with this gosh darn drawing well i mean i need to color them now but um this is the correct way let's flip it around horizontally see how it looks this way around his hand still looks so derpy it looks too small um, let's see how much I can finagle this with the liquify tool. It might absolutely blast the quality, unfortunately, but I guess I can redraw it if I really feel like it, but that was very literal expansion just then. <laughs> problem now is that his hand is kind of tangenting with different parts of her hair. Oh, you know what? That's okay. That looks all right. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you for that. Perhaps you could do a portfolio feedback session for my intern sometime coming from an international perspective. That sounds cool. Yeah, we can definitely discuss that. Um, I believe my email is linked in the description. So, um, yeah. I'd be down. I don't know how qualified I feel, but as so long as you know it's all opinion based and you know, based off personal experience, then I would love that. Okay, um let's see. That's something. 
Hank, you asked me something a second ago. Let's see. Uh, you talk about being in the industry often. What company would you choose to work for if you could? Um, I used to always say Netflix, but with all the poor management choices and just general... Is there a cat in here? What? Sorry, there's like weird noises. And I think it must just be the chair adjusting itself, but it sounds like it's an animal. I mean, there's multiple animals in this house. I would also just realize I was drawing on the wrong layer. Love that for me. Boo. What? Oh, oh my God, Ray, you are Andy. <laughs> he is like, he's the exact same color as the floor. And I guess I need glasses because I did not see him at all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> wow, Anya, you have top tier observational skills apparently. Anyway, let's turn up the opacity on these guys so I can do some color picking. Are you excited? Are you guys excited to see... What is this? Random artifact. To see this image actually be... Whoops. <clears throat> to see it be properly brought together. Also, okay, wait. I just spotted something and I'm very happy about it. Let me... Let me point it out to you in just a moment. Also, do these guys have the exact same skin tone? I'm gonna need to fix that. Uh, well, let's lighten Maya slightly. And then let's darken Eddie, because he's meant to be like, kind of Native American, and, and part Native American, part Asian. Okay, that's better. And she's just very white. Again, none of these colors are final. Um, oh, I should probably color in her hand too. I assume she would like to have not a blue hand. There we go. So, if you look here at my uh, thumbnails, this one of Eddie, I think looks really solid. Like it's just a tiny thumbnail silhouette and the pose reads very cleanly. And that is what I'm looking for. If I do say so myself, I think it's successful. Myers is a little trickier because her second hand isn't quite visible, um, but you can see she's like hunched in on herself and it's feeling kind of small. So I definitely think that it's still reading pretty decently. Okay, well I can get rid of all these sketch layers now. And I can finally, finally, finally move on to getting all the colors in. I'm not so worried about keeping all these colors separated out this time around. If you were tuning in for my uh, facial expression live stream, that one I was more concerned about in terms of color, but this one less so. I mean, you saw me tweaking things just now. Um, I'm not so worried about accuracy because I will make a totally different document eventually to have like all the RGB values and so forth for me to reference. I'm not gonna be referencing these once I'm ready. And I mean, later down the line in Harmony, you can create color palettes, like pre-made ones that you can transfer from project to project. And so I will have that at the go as well. Oh, I just realized I forgot to draw a line on my, uh, whoopsie daisy. A dress, it's gonna be like that. Actually, no, I want it to be a little more curved in. Do I? No, I don't. I want it to be like that. Cool. All right. All right, Maya. I think it's kind of funny how Maya is also the name of the animation software. Not the 3D animation software we use. Hee ha hoo ha. In terms of her tights, not her tights, her socks and shoes being the same color, I made that choice, one, because white and white is quite nice and it's trendy, but two, it's just going to be much easier for me to color. Uh, need snacks, BRB, enjoy your snacks. Is this made on iPad? Yes, I am using Procreate, and that is, um, that is that. Um, yes, I love Procreate very much, that is what I do almost all of my uh, work with. I, I still don't know how to use Photoshop. And it's like more of a, it's a choice at this point. 
where I just don't feel like being an idiot again. And I say being an idiot, that's being too harsh on myself. But you know when you're learning new software, you know the principles of drawing, you know the idea that blending modes this and that and whatever, but um, you have to figure out the interface all over again and you have to figure out what unique features there are about, um, what's it called, about certain software. And that is really stressful at times. So that is something I just haven't prepared myself yet for in terms of learning Photoshop. Okay, and my iPad screen is dark again. Yay. Can you tell I'm very happy about that? <laughs> I also just realized I forgot to give her pupils. It would be much easier if I designed these characters without pupils. So there is a small chance that I will just get rid of them entirely and just have them be these block colors. But I have not decided yet. Actually, I'm gonna have to make this bigger. I'm glad that this expression ended up reading well because she was looking a little worse for wear up until the last second. So, thank you, Maya, for getting your face fixed. All right, here's her blonde hair. Sometimes I still do miss her brunette hair and red cardigan, and there is still a chance that I will return to that, but I think in terms of what suits the rest of the characters in the film as a whole. Blonde and blue Maya is uh, probably the right way to go. Be as stereotypically like Nordic as possible, I guess. Nordic Scandinavian, you know, she's Russian. She's up north, that's, that's that whole deal. Okay. And then we can get our little blushies, uh, my favorite time. Not, it's actually kind of really annoying to do these blushies because they always look a little wonky. Like, just then, this needs to be more centered. This one needs to be to the side. Fingers, fingers, fingers. Oh. Because also, if I don't do it really neatly, it looks kind of rushed and careless and I don't want it to look like that but that's what it might end up being <laughs> if I'm not careful. Um, the iPad going dark just isn't a me problem. I hallucinate from time to time it's wild. I still don't understand it. I still don't understand. Do you use any fancy styluses? I use this which is the Apple Pencil Generation 2 I believe. So it's my baby. Very useful. Okay. Now we can move on to Eddie. Bro, this is the first time I've ever drawn any of my characters in their official designs, like, uh, interacting properly. Like, this is really exciting for me and you're here for the ride. And I'm sorry that it's kind of chaotic, but uh, yeah. Hopefully this is just the beginning of literally thousands of drawings of them. Uh, that I'm less excited for, but. <laughs> That's the way it is. I might have to hire animators, but I don't know how much I can afford. If any of you are experienced in coloring or just generally using, um, what's it called? Harmony. I'd love to hit you up later down the line so that you can help me out on animating this film. Uh... Blue time, blue time, blue time. I also just remembered that last night, just because I felt like it, I made the background of this document. Hang on, actually, I'm gonna have to redo that. I made the background of this document, um, what's it called? Yellow, just a very pale yellow. Has anyone noticed that? Or have you all just thought your eyes are a bit funny? Because I totally forgot that I did that until just now. And then I realized, oh wait, this is from the blue story, so I should have made it blue. But it's never too late. I will make it blue once I've finished this sketch. Hmm. Uh, uh, 
add one more layer here. Eddie, why are you so cool? I like drawing cool guys, but like, he's not typically, I mean, he is definitely typically handsome. If you've seen uh, from previous streams or in my Patreon, I have a version of these guys where they're both undressed. Uh, I have my reasons <laughs> um, that are valid, but just saying. Um, but, oh, is my forehead bleeding? What on earth? So I guess he is like stereotypically handsome, whatever, and like body wise, but he's got such a like contorted looking face, but I think it's like a fun design. Oh, my nose is so itchy. What is going on with me today? Sorry, I'm being like so ungrace ungraceful at the minute. Okay, let's fix that. That's where his shoulder pad is. Boom, cabal. And then one more. That is this. I kind of like his goofy face. I know when I was doing the expression sheets for the father from the yellow story that I want to keep a more naturalistic performance. So I don't know if I'm going to stick with the silly little goofy mouth thing he's doing right now, but uh, we shall see. Alright, I see I didn't perfectly colour in the lines there, but that's okay. Oh, that is less okay. This is kind of egregious. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Um, let's do the bottle in this layer too. Let's make it like, I don't know, this color? I don't know. He's like really sucking on that thing. It's kind of gross, bro. Like you don't need to shove the whole thing down your throat. <laughs> well, I guess he's not afraid of his, of, uh, his masculinity. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. With that and that'll be here like that so that's a label and then finally we give him some blushies blushy blushy time I forgot I didn't give him blushies on his turnaround not in that version anyway okay let's try that Is close enough? I should check the chat in a moment. Okay, and then finally, before we turn Maya back on, we're gonna. Whoops. Whoa! That's not what I wanted. Clipping mask. Actually, this is a little too desaturated. Let's fix that and make it slightly pinker. Like that. Yeah, that's better. So many layers, I should name these all later so I don't get as tangled up as I currently am. And then finally, this. Cool. Oh man, I really hope that this looks decent. And then we flip it around to be the correct way round. Ah! And I'm gonna change the background color to be hmm. It's gonna be closer to like kind of like this, I think, in my film. <sighs> All right. Why did that take so long? I don't know. This has been a very long stream. I think I've been going for like four hours, right? Let's see, how long have I been going? It'll tell me someone was four hours. Oh my gosh, I've been going for almost five hours. That is ridiculous. I like how it took me around six hours to do a full expression sheet of 15 different expressions for the father character. But for this pose, it took me almost that amount of time to do one pose. Uh, so that's a lot. Anyway. 
I'm going to keep that on the screen for a moment. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to hide all my reference stuff. Hide the sketches. And just let, allow you to enjoy that for a bit. Um, in terms of lighting, let me just try something. I should rename this. Finished. Or oh, no, clean. We'll go clean. All right, this is gonna take a second, and then I'm gonna flatten it. Oh, whoops. You, how dare you sneak in, Leia. Oh, I'm just gonna hide everything. Like that. Cool. Gonna, I wanna see if this reads as a silhouette. Well, obviously Maya is totally covered up, so she's hidden in that silhouette. But what I really wanted to do is, um, Let's see. Well, they're viewing the, the fireworks are on their way. So let's, I want to do add, but it's going to impact the line art and I kind of don't want that like this. And I can't bother to duplicate the line art right now. So I'm going to try color dodge. No, color dodge is not going to work. How about this? Oh, whatever. I don't care if, um, I don't care if the colors are off for now because this is just a general experiment that I'm curious about for how my final film is going to look. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to select gonna not make this a clipping mask, it's just gonna be its own separate thing. This is gonna be super rough. I literally just wanna test something out real quick. Uh, I don't have an idea where I want the lighting to be. I guess like this, and then that would be like that, and then this would be like this. Okay, this is looking really crunchy because I'm being so lazy about it and using just like a gigantic brush. But I'm just trying to like get an idea of what it's going to look like when they're shaded to any degree. Um, okay, and then let me just adjust this color to be less intense. Again, it's not properly shaded, not at all. So please don't judge that, but. So that's a little closer to the kind of look that we'll get from them in the film. Kind of, kind of. But I'm gonna um, read through some stuff. Oh, animated had to head out. Oh no, so I was gonna read all your messages about South Africa. Sorry for doing that late. Let me scroll up and read them anyway, in case you tune in later. Sadly, South African schools only really teach technicalities, not so much the true art side of things. So sometimes I worry my advice isn't thorough enough. Would love to have your input. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay. Do you have a job on top of school now? Or are you a full-time student? I, I'm not in school. It's summertime, but I do have a job um, for a company called Hornet every now and then. I get booked for a couple days at a time. I have my student union slash student treasurer job at school and then I do this and then I also um, like helping out around the house, walking the dog and so forth and also I'm trying to maintain going to the gym and things so yeah um, let's see 
Not knowing how to do basic actions on new so uh, software is the most frustrating thing on earth. Right. Ugh. Pain. <laughs> That's why I've avoided Photoshop for so long. You simplified what I was trying to say earlier into a nice, concise sentence. Thank you. Um, as a beginner, which is preferable to do first, digital or traditional? Doesn't matter. If you are learning the principles of drawing, like anatomy and like solid drawing and kind of color theory and things, you can do that with any any uh, type of material. I think if you want career readiness, digital is usually the way to go these days, unless you are dead set on being like a traditional illustrator or something. But I think it's useful to have both principles in mind. When you're traditional, you don't have an undo button. And I think that's very useful to practice with. So it's a little bit of both. I suggest doing both at the same time if you can. Uh, Photoshop is far less intuitive than Procreate. Yes, that's so, so true. Um, okay. Oh, thank you, cool dude, as well. I hope you're probably gone by now, too. But thank you very much for having stopped by. Good night. GG, hey again, MFT. Have you made the producer show? If so, how was your experience? If not, is there a stigma behind it? I did make it into the producer show, technically. the So my first year, it, a producer show didn't really happen and I didn't have a film to submit anyway. But this past year, the film Warm Welcome, which I uh, directed along with a wonderful team of classmates, we submitted that and that got into the producer show. So we had some really, really cool people end up watching it. Um, and we got to have it screened on a ginormous, literally the biggest screen I have seen in my life at the Academy Museum in Los Angeles. We had it there with like 5.1 surround sound and like really blasting the volume. And I made the music for that film. So that was a really surreal to experience. Um, and having like people like clapping en masse. Oh gosh, it was a phenomenal time. I was super dressed up because I helped, um, not organize, I helped set up for the event. So I got there early that day. And then I got changed into like a fancy red dress and high heels. I was definitely one of the most fancy dressed for the day. But you see the way I dress you guys. I do it, I, I dress this way in real life too. So uh, it's always fun. Uh, very thankful for the experience. And it's funny because I had this weird sadness still where I was like, oh, I wish I could get into the producer show. That was like really cool, the attention everyone's films were getting, but it's like, I did that. I was in the producer show, but I guess it wasn't my own film completely on my own. So that is still a goal, but not a big goal for a couple reasons. One, uh, you're not eligible to be in the producer show if your film is too long, unless you get a special award, which is voted on by your peers. But when there's like 200 films to vote for, you're gonna really have to stand out among, out of the crowd to get that vote. Um, so I'm not gonna rely on that. And your yeah, producer show is not, it does not uh, weigh in on how good your film is. Of course, they often select the best of the best, but what is the best? It depends on who is suggesting it that year. And, you know, it's like a, uh, it's called a jury of staff that vote on what gets in and things get in for different reasons every year. And each individual piece gets in for different reasons every year. So yeah, uh, for those who don't know, producer show is like the event at CalArts where the top films from that year get selected and screened at a, a, a fancy venue somewhere in LA. And you have like guest speakers, it's not guest speakers, you have guests of honor and all these fancy execs and studio representatives come and it's really lovely. Anyway, um, let's see. Okay, you are such a good host. Thank you for answering so many questions. I've got to go best wishes on this project. Thank you so much for stopping by, Hank Campbell. Again, sorry that I'm getting to all these messages so late, but yes. Okay, uh, did you find your design jobs that you've had so far from the Center for Life and Work or Compass? We've found more success searching out and meeting your own people. I have not used the Center for Life and Work at all at school. That tends to be mostly used by other departments at CalArts. But for me specifically, um, it was through Portfolio Day. People reached out to me. So Portfolio Day, I presented my work and that is when Netflix and Hornet found my stuff in 2021. And Hornet, I've been rehired this year because they, well, they were actually waiting kind of for me to be finished with school. So very nice of them to want to keep me on board. Um, let's see. Uh, trust me, you sound like you're tackling so many things since we corresponded last year. I'm so proud of the person you're becoming, Anya. Take great care of your teacher session soon. Best. Thank you, Attila. Yeah, uh, so Attila and I, we communicated and I did some uh, portfolio critique a little over a year ago, I believe. And I guess it looks like a lot of, we've been getting up to a lot of stuff 
both of us independently in that time and I'm sure so have you guys. Um, let's see. Have to turn off the true tone option so brightness doesn't change. I know what you're talking about and it's not that because that's a separate incident that I've had to adjust and it doesn't always, it, like it kind of fades in and out of being darker and lighter but this is like a snap change that I, that setting is off and it still does it. And I think it's like a battery thing, I don't know. Anyway, okay, right, we've got people looking. When is the deadline for the film? Uh, it's usually mid-May, uh, not May, mid-April is the film deadline for um, the CalArts films. It changes a little bit every, every year because it's on a Monday at 4 p.m. usually. So like two years ago, or yeah, two years ago was like 4.20 and everyone was so excited that the deadline was 4.20 at 4 p.m. And we begged to make the deadline 20 minutes later that year to be 4.20 p.m. Didn't happen, whatever, cringe, but yeah. <laughs> a bit random, but I love how you stylize that type of shoe she's wearing. Thank you, yeah, she's wearing the kind of shoe I wear. Um, and I just like, I just wanted to simplify it down to make it as easy as possible to work in. Uh, I'm working on a drawing for a final and enjoyed your company all the way. Thank you so much. Oh, wow, you stuck by this whole time. For all of you that have stuck by this whole time, my heart, like you, ah. Uh, Thank you guys. <laughs> it really does mean a lot. It really does. Um, okay. If you do end up needing help, would you, would you make an open announcement where you look for people you know? This is such a beautiful, interesting project. I will make. I will first contact people I know, um, depending on how available they are, because they're mostly going to be people at school. And you know, what? I'm gonna. We've we've seen enough of mine, Eddie, for now. I'm gonna just move to my face for a bit. Um, just because then I know they know the software and I don't have to explain too many things to them. But if I end up needing a lot of help, I will definitely do an open call, but I'll have to be very careful about that because I'll need to make sure it's volunteer work. Um, because otherwise it'll be too much work for me to go through and check um, work eligibility and the legality of who is working from where and if they're over 18 or under 18, all of it. Um, I, well, I mean, I'd have to set that up anyway, but that'll be a trickier process and I'd need to do some general vetting anyway, but I would love to do an open call if I need it, which I probably will. Yeah, uh, let's see what is happening in the chat. Uh, I've only had screen brightness problems with huge canvases. Interesting, maybe it is that. So, okay, we have had some cheese fairies from the draw-alongs. I'm gonna definitely check them out as soon as I am out of the stream. But, uh, oh, Hank is still here. So I'm glad I got to say proper bye. Uh, doing comic book character sheets whilst watching the streams. They're really motivating. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, yeah, you guys, I hope you've all been productive too in this time that you've stuck by. I think it is time for me to get going. Looks like I'm not gonna get any nap time, but I am gonna walk the dog now. And I think I'm gonna leave Maya and Eddie to, they look so sad. Well, Maya looks so sad. Makes my heart sad. I mean, she's meant to, but... Oh, hi, Kiran. You are literally just catching, like, the very end of my stream. I'm, like, ending now. But, uh, okay. Love you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day, night, morning, evening, whatever it may be. And I'm sure I will see you soon. All right. Bye.